She can call in until the computer is fixed. It's true. She can call in. Yeah. So. Um, Pop up. Yeah, Trisha, your for your microphone is on mute. Let me know when you want me to have them go live. Okay, is everybody ready to go live? All right. All right, let's go live. Good evening, and welcome to the April 14th, 2020 school board meeting. Um, in unprecedented times, we will be doing this meeting virtually, and this is the first time our board is trying this. So we're going to get um, we're going to get started at a little after seven. Um, Madam Clerk, can you pull the board? Yes, ma'am. Dr. Chase here. Uh, Ms. Hazard? Here. Ms. Healy? Ms. Healy? I Ms. believe Jane we need to connect. Um, how about Ms. Hollerbach? Um, I'm here. Ms. Randall? Here. Dr. Warner? Here. And Ms. Young. Ms. Young. Okay. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Before we keep going, I would just want wanted to say, in the interest of one of the um, principles of Staff County Public Schools is to be a lifelong learner. And I think tonight the seven board members will be demonstrating that, that we will be learning a new way of communicating and carrying on the um, business of the school board, school board and the school division. So we are going to be lifelong learning tonight together. Uh, so moving on to number two, uh, the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? Madam motion. Chair, this is Dr. Chase. Mm -hmm. I would like to propose an amendment to the agenda. Um, in the interest in the interest of time, we have eight information items that staff are asking us to move to action or to consider moving to action. I would like to propose that we move items 10.10 .10 through 10.17 to action just in the interest of efficiency. Um, we, in our discussion, may decide that those items need to come back next week or in two weeks to our next meeting, but just so that we don't have to have eight separate motions on this topic, I just thought uh, that might make sense. Is there a second? Is there a second to that motion? Okay. Nope. All right. I don't, I don't hear one. Um, so please know that we, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, can we go ahead and then have a motion to approve the agenda again? Uh, doc, this is Dr. Chase, motion to approve the agenda. Second. All right. All right, I think there was a second by Dr. Warner. Any, um, any discussion? All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, I believe, are there any nays? Okay, hearing none, I'm going to say that that was, um, that the motion carried unanimously. So we will move on to our um, adoption of board resolutions. We have a part number 3.01. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Uh, item 3.01. Is there a second? Second. Susan Randall. Okay. Thank you. All right. There's been a, a um, motion to approve. I just thought, um, 
Are there any discussion by the motion makers? Let me give uh, Dr. Warner and uh, Randall the first opportunity to speak if you so choose. No, I, I, I think that the resolution to adopt the procedures for electronic meetings is perfectly in line with what we need to do at this time. Ms. Randall, I, I agree. Any Chair. other concerns? Madam Chair? Yes, Ms. Oliver. I would just ask that um, maybe you pause a little bit when you're asking for a first, a second, and a vote, because I think it might be taking people some time to find the unmute button. We're trying to be, you know, to be cognizant that there is background noise, so a lot of us are muting, and sometimes the the, the mouse gets stuck or it takes a little second to get over to the microphone to unmute. So I just would like to be cognizant of that. I appreciate that. Again, like long learners, I would just like to make the comment uh, in general that this really does talk about that the operation of the school board is essential and indispensable because there is so much um, going on with the education in in our district so um that talks about it but i would like to just say to the board we can at our at the election of our board conduct meetings by regular procedures or electronic as access i would um ask the board members to can to um, think about as we move forward with regard to budget that we may or may not want to use this particular format so just let's be open but this resolution allows us to use regular procedures or totally electronic or a hybrid and that may be something we want to consider going forward well in reading the resolution it appears that we have some flexibility in how we opt to conduct the meetings during this time and i think we certainly are amenable to different options i think this just makes it a public record that we are acknowledging most of our meetings are going to be by and large electronic until this pandemic is is resolved to that degree are there any other comments or um, concerns all right hearing none i would like to um call the question on approving resolution 3.01. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Hearing none, I'm going to say that, um, that the motion passed unanimously. Let's move on to subject to uh, the next resolution 3.02. Is there a motion to approve? Madam Chair, I vote to, or I um, move to approve 3.02. I second 3.02. This is Dr. Warner. Terrific. So there's been a first and a second. The motion is on the table. Again, to either of the um, motion makers would you like to have any comment on this particular motion um no i just um agreed that this is something that i remember reading with the vsba and i just feel like it's appropriate for our board to adopt i agree are there any other comments or questions about this particular resolution Um, I would like to draw the board's attention to the one that it talks about, um, Dr. Kisner, that you are, um, I guess it directs you to inform the school board of any regulations that the superintendent suspends based on those same considerations. I guess I would just ask that you work with, um, I guess, Ms. Boatwright or council um, to make sure that the board receives notice of any of those. I, I, I believe that's in line with this procedure. Is that correct, Dr. Kisner? Yeah, that, yes, exactly. Okay. So that would be great if you all just work together to make sure that board should you have to waive some receive that notice. All right. All right. Any further comment or discussion? All right. Hearing none. 
All those in favor of approving 3.02, please say aye. 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 All right. Are there any, um, anyone voting no? Hearing none, I'm going to say that the, the policy passed unanimously. All right. Moving on to what is usually our citizen comment section. During this time, we have suspended that. However, there is certainly adequate ways to reach out to board members. We encourage uh, the members of the public to email board members, certainly get in contact with us with questions that, um, that you may have. We will also be, as we evolve in this process, um, coming up with ways that they can be submitted. But the nice thing is, is there is a way on our website to send something to all board members that has been created. So just want to point that out for those who may or may not know that. Um, next, we're going to move on to board committee report. That would be the student discipline report. I would ask uh, Ms. Hallerbeck if you would mind uh, reading that, please. On March 5th, 2020, a committee of the school board met to consider one student disciplinary matter. The committee suspended student A for 45 school days with the regional program at the Phoenix Center for Innovative Learning offered. All right, thank you very much. Next, we're going to go on to board board member comments. Um, I am just going to ask my fellow board members for us to um, maybe abide by or to abide by the three minute. Um, if you so choose to give comments tonight, just to make sure that we are um, cognizant of the demands on our, our staff. I know they start early and they work late, but I'm certainly um, open to those. I'm going to call on everybody by name. I think that will be the easiest way to get through get through our list. Um, so um, let's see. Um, Ms. Randall, would you like to get us started? Sorry. <laughs> Sure. Uh, I'm just keeping this brief. I thank uh, Dr. Kisner and his staff for their endless and tireless work in updating us and as well as the public. And um, I just hope our families and our staff stay safe. That's all. Thank you. All right. Uh, Dr. Warner, do you have any comments? Just a few. Um, it's just been on this last month to go from compulsory school attendance to mass canceled classes and special events. Um, it's fundamentally altered our way of life and I've had the privilege of volunteering at Widewater Elementary Schools on a few occasions to distribute meals. I just want to say how impressed I am with the leadership from Dr. Kisner, the administration at the schools that are participating in the meal distribution. Um, the, the cohesiveness, the way that, that, that the um, nutrition staff works, it's much more difficult to put on this type of meal feeding program than it is to just normally feed an elementary school full of students, and they've really risen to the occasion. It's very difficult to maintain that six feet of social distancing in tight quarters, but they've, they've managed to do an extraordinary job, and I appreciate um, not only Dr. Kisner's efforts, but the central office and the way this is um, pulled together to, to really meet the needs of our community and our students. And I know that the families are very appreciative um, as they've tried to um, navigate this new system where their kids are home and they're trying to homeschool. And the schools have been very quick to not only hand out meals, but Chromebooks and uh, learning packets, books, whatever materials and resources they can to help the families navigate it at this time. It's been quite impressive to see our Stafford Public School staff and administrators lead the way in this. Thank you. Ms. Young, would um, would you like to give your comments? She was having some tech technical difficulties. I think she was going to try and call in. Okay, I'll be back around to her. Um, Ms. Hollerback, do you have any comments? Um, I'm going to defer for now. We've got a lot of business to take care of, so thank you. Dr. Chase? I, I just ditto the comments of uh, Ms. Randall and um, Dr. Warner, and uh, we'll defer the rest of my time. Uh, Ms. Healy, do you have any comments? Well, I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> and I want to thank John for getting me connected to, uh, to this 
this site and I, I do want to thank everyone for everything that's being done and I think we're just getting started with the with the challenges so I I will defer any other comments in the interest of, of time because we have a long agenda thank you I'm going to give Ms. Young um, a second opportunity I can't see if she's on or not All right, I'm gonna, um, then I'm just gonna move on. My comments are similar to everyone else's. We're in a um, challenging time, but we also have some of the greatest people um, who I know are working on the front lines to Dr. Kisner and his staff, to our um, teachers, paraprofessionals, everybody who's um, being upbeat and especially a great call out to our counselors as well. So with that, um, we will continue to work on the, um, the business of our schools, but again, a big thank you to all of those who have been um, on the front lines and working tirelessly to, for our students and our families. Madam Chair, I believe yeah. Ms. Young has joined us by phone. Okay. Ms. Young, would you like to um, um, have any comments? We seem to be having technical difficulty with her. Okay. Um, so I will move on to our superintendent comments to Dr. Kisner. I know that he has some um, information to share with the board. So Dr. Kisner, uh, you're up. Okay, thank you. Also, um, after the consent agenda item, I do want to make a, a, a brief comment based on some action that you'll be taking, uh, if you don't mind. I, I would have I would do it now, but I, I forgot that the consent agenda item goes after um, after my remarks. Anyway, um, I thank the board for their continued support. I also want to thank the board, the school board, the board of supervisors, um, and the community at, for their understanding that at times there are no clear answers to every question being asked. I also acknowledge that perfect should not be the enemy of good. We will have time to review and adjust our decisions, but one thing I am confident in is that our staff is committed to making decisions that focus on learning, equity, social emotional support, and taking care of basic needs such as eating. We also realize that at times we will have to adjust our plan based on our experiences and new decisions that are made by others such as the governor or the Virginia Department of Education. However, too much change can cause confusion, and I greatly value the deliberation and well thought out plan we have implemented for the remainder of the school year, which ends on May 29th. Finally, we recognize, um, well, well, I shouldn't say finally, I got more. We recognize and have started the conversation of recovery, learning and system recovery. We know there are now many students that struggle with their learning and there will be more students that will have gaps in their learning when we return for the 2021 school year. Our unwavering support for equity and excellence for all students must be the foundation of our decisions. There is no one approach to address this recovery challenge. The recovery focus will be on student well-being, academics, staff support, retention, recruitment, and finance and operations. In the area of communication, and I do thank the comments that have been made, that I, and I think I believe the board does recognize that I'm trying to keep you informed as much as possible, along with staff and parents. Weekly, I send a formal letter to all parents and staff, and our website and social media sites are also being used as a way to highlight what we are doing and communicating new information. I want to applaud the great work of our staff in connecting with our families and sharing the great stories with the public on social media. Soon we will be opening a parent hotline for parents that speak another language first. This hotline will allow parents to leave questions or comments in six different languages and we will return their phone calls within 24 hours in the language they speak. I end by saying there continue to be many unknowns and the future remains unclear which can cause high levels of anxiety for some. We are in an international health crisis that has impacted so many members of our staff and community in so many different ways. Our actions as a school system is, a, is to support and not contribute to anxiety some people may be experiencing. 
However, we are also finding the positives and leveraging this to strengthen our school system for the future. I will address this more at a, la at a later time. The cooperation of the school board, staff and parents have been very rewarding for not only for me, but to our staff and community at large. Our school system has been and should continue to be the bedrock of the Stafford community. I thank our great staff for their endless energy and passion for doing what is right for our students, even at times putting themselves at risk. I am confident that the best is yet to come. So now I would like to share just some information. So every Tuesday and Thursday, superintendents uh, across the state have a conference call with the uh, state superintendent. And you might be aware that the governor, I, I know you're aware, that the governor on Saturday amended his budget. Um, we have not received, we may receive as early as tomorrow, definitely by Thursday. Um, some preliminary um, numbers, how it would impact Stafford. We're not the official calculator. To after. This is a change to after um, April 22nd when the General Assembly reconvenes and takes some action on the budget. But what do we know for now? Uh, we know that the adjustments to the cost of compete um, have been suspended. There was some additional money for us, not significant because we only get 25%. We know that enrollment loss has been suspended. That would not impact us. We're gaining children. We know at-risk funds that are in the general fund, but not in the lottery fund, have been uh, suspended. The lottery at-risk money remains. We know that the compensation um, that was uh, for teachers, uh, SOQ positions, have been suspended both for FY21 and FY22. We know that um, this next one wouldn't impact I us either, but there's no loss um, funding. That's for school divisions that would be losing money um, based on either the composite index or enrollment loss. And we know that uh, uh, the money that we were anticipating to support children on reduced lunch have been suspended for um, FY2121. They, they use the word suspended intentionally because they're gonna constantly be evaluating the revenue. So some of these things, trying to be optimistic, could, could be adjusted for the better. The VPI funding that will remain in effect um, for, with the FY20 numbers, not the uh, numbers that they had for um, 21 and 22, which would have been uh, $6,232 per student. The uh, standards of quality change for the uh, EL, for the English learners, that has not changed. So we'll be um, still in a position where we would have to hire, I think, 7.8 uh, new positions. The school council ratios will not, uh, they will stay in our current, the FY20. They, that has been removed. That hasn't even been suspended. That has been removed. So we will not be in a position to have state money to hire additional um, uh, school counselors. There are some other things that are more technical in nature, um, but the, um, the major things again is that the funding to support salary increases will not be there at, at this point in time. The money to support school counselors will not be, will not be there. The money, the expectations and some funding to support ES, EL teachers, uh, the ratio um, will be there. So again, um, tomorrow or definitely by the end of the week, I will share with the school board as soon as we get the information from the Department of Education on what that looks like for Stafford County Public Schools. It won't be till after April 22nd that we'll actually really get the calculator um, which is tied to our ADM projections, that I could give you a much clearer picture, which does lead me to something that I think the school board will have to um, uh, discuss, if not tonight, definitely in two weeks, about adjusting, or if you want to adjust your budget calendar, um, I would probably recommend that you do that in light that the Board of Supervisors has changed their um, budget calendar. And of course, now we're going to learn after um, uh, 
28th, you know, uh, you may not have enough time to deliberate to adopt a budget. I think the Board of Supervisors is doing it uh, May 5th. Okay, so um, I'm just going to keep on going. I don't know how we do this, if we want to stop and ask me questions, but maybe I could just... Um, and, and, and everything I'm sharing with you is what I know. So if you ask me questions, I would probably say, okay, I'm going to get back to you. Okay. Um, I do know that you've been asked and I've been asked and I have this one kid from Stafford High School that truly emails me two or three times a day about high school graduation. And this is what I want to say. And this is in uh, collaboration with our high school principals and, and Dr. Nichols that we've, and I have said this in my letter, I've said it uh, you know, publicly, uh, we want as much as possible to have a high school graduation, a formal high school graduation. So we have scheduled, um, and I'll just let, I'll state the date and then make some comments. Um, for August 1st, it's a Saturday morning. Um, we're probably looking at around 8 a.m. I know it's going to be hot. The details will still be worked out. But it has to be clearly communicated to the public that this is continued upon actions from the governor and guidance from health experts, um, even though our schools are right now closed to um, June 10th, um, I believe, you know, uh, that I would not be surprised, uh, let me just put it that way, that that might, that could be extended. So if we're allowed to have large gatherings and we're allowed to have people um, closer than six feet apart, um, and, and we're allowed to open our buildings, then um, we would love to have a graduation on August 1st. If we're unable, we, as soon as we hear that, uh, that that June 10th date is being extended, we feel, and the we is the high school principals, myself and, and Dr. Nichols, that we have to have closure on this issue and work towards a virtual high school um, graduation. And there's uh, companies that would help us do that. So. Um, there's a lot of planning that goes into a graduation ceremony. I, ceremony, I know you know that. And um, so we want to give people as much notice as possible, but I don't want to mislead people that um, this is what we would love to do, but it's continued on so many factors and pretty much all out of our control. So that's on graduation. I also would like um, uh, to do, and we have time to think this out, um, we had teachers of the year and service employees of the year um, that we are recognizing on our Facebook and, and Instagram, but it's nothing, I mean, that's great. That's a, you know, that's a great one way of doing it, but we would like to honor them um, when we can, when we could get back to school. My thinking, at least for the teacher of the year right now, how great would it be for our new teachers during the new teacher orientation to have a program where they get to meet their colleagues that have been recognized by their peers as teacher of the year. But again, we have time to work that out, but I don't want to lose sight of, of that of that group. Just for an update to the board, um, we have uh, given out, um, uh, as of last week, 5,400 Chromebooks. Um, we have seen a huge increase in um, the, the Chromebooks being used, which is positive. Um, we've given out, and also our Google Classrooms um, from before the closing to now, so we know more teachers are um, working with their students through uh, Google uh, Classrooms. Um, as of the end of last week, uh, we've distributed now 64,600 meals, which is, um, you know, you know, it's impressive on one level, but shows the need at, a, at another level. Um, and we'll have more time to talk about this, but the state uh, uh, just two days ago, um, or maybe last Friday, Virtual Virginia, which is a, um, uh, you know, a, another on -learn, online learning platform, um, is being open to all schools at all grade levels. Um, Again, we'll talk more about this. Our school system is, uh, so this would be help us to support the new learning. Um, you know, what uh, I don't want to lose sight of is that the recovery, we're going to have children that needs, we need to accelerate. We need to remediate and accelerate. We have other children that are going to have gaps um, that we have to focus target gaps. We have other children that we need to get new learning started. Um, 
you know, soon as we can um, for the 2021 school year, which I think is another conversation the school board may eventually want to have when we um, learn when schools can open. Um, again, I'm hoping it could open the date that we're scheduled to open, but if that is not um, a possibility, then you know, I think we just have to think of other options. I have strategically stopped using the term summer school, summer learning, okay, um, because we are learning, um, as we learned tonight about how to have this meeting online, which I have to say you guys are doing a great job. We have very, very few hiccups just in the beginning. Um, we um, we are, were much better this week than we were uh, when we started, and we're um, – we're taking, um, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're taking the right, uh, we're making the right decisions and taking uh, the steps necessary. But we need to um, also recognize, and I say this for the board as we budget our deliberations for the budget, our staff have a contract. And that contract, you know, ends, you know, uh, sometime in June. There's a number of days they work. So when I talk about summer learning and, and extending the school year, Please recognize um, it's a it's absolutely needed, but there's a cost associated with that. And again, that will be for future conversations. So I thank you for your time. And again, if you don't mind, I just want to make a statement after you approve the consent agenda item. Um, uh, and thank you. And if for those people watching and saying, why is he wearing a T-shirt? Every day I'm wearing another school T-shirt. Today I'm wearing Kate Waller Barrett. Uh, elementary school t-shirt and um, so I'm I'm their staff member for the day. Madam Chair, can I ask a couple questions on about Dr. Kisner's statement? Sure, why don't you get us started and then I will actually go to each board member in turn just so everybody gets at least an opportunity if that's okay but Dr. Warner, why don't you get us started? Okay, um, so I was just curious, we're not going to have an official um, uh, number from the state until after April 22nd, as far as their fiscal disbursement will be for Stafford County, correct? Correct. And then the um, Board of Supervisors is going to meet on the 28th, but they're not going to officially set their budget until May 5th, correct? That's, that's my understanding, yes. Okay. And um, the positions that we still need to maintain the F for the SOQs are the English as the second learners, uh, English uh, English learners, um, and also for the counselors. It seems like there was like a partial position that we still had. Do we do we have all schools have at least one counselor? Because I'm wondering if um, we aren't going to have some problems that students aren't going to need additional support when they return to school. Yeah, so I'm really glad you brought it up. So um, a couple things. The current SOQs remain in effect, and we're still using the number 700 because we don't have another number that's – we don't have another projection that says that number is inaccurate. So our ratios um, have to be looked at and examined again when these children come. Um, so we, we want to avoid having – itinerant school counselors. That is one of our objectives, that schools, um, every school has at least one school counselor, but we want to uh, make sure that if somebody's one day plus, you know, one, uh, four days a week, that that person is a whole and they have five days a week. So I will get you more information on that, what it would look like to make sure that there are no uh, partial school counselors at a school. Um. Thank you. I, I think that's really everything else I think is probably. Oh, is there a fee for doing the virtual graduation? Would we have to pay um, pay any funds for that? So the um, company that we get our uh, graduation rings and yearbooks, I guess, they're working with this. I, I, I believe that uh, Dr. Tom Nichols told me there would be no fee for that. Um, but let me get let me double check that answer. Okay, that's it. I'm. I'm. Thank you for your 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 answers. Thank you. All right, um, Dr. Chase, do you want to go next? Do you have any questions? Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, 
One question is, uh, when will we legally be required to have adopted our budget? So the state code says May 15th or 30 days after the General Assembly. So if they adopted the 22nd, we would have um, to uh, May 22nd. Um, uh, so definitely by the 15th, but, um, but I think we would have an extension now because the General Assembly did not adopt their budget yet. Okay. And then um, do you have concerns about uh, hiring and teachers' contracts given that this is being pushed out, or do you think every division is going to be dealing with this same issue? Yeah, so that's a great question. We actually talked about that this morning. We um, know that the staff that we have today or the number of staff that we have today, we're absolutely going to need for next year. We're aggressively still pursuing um, uh, vacancies and getting staff. There's a, there's a clause in our contract, which is true in probably everybody's contract, that says, you know, your contract is continued upon having funding to support it. So we, um, what's going to be a greater challenge this year is that uh, often in the past, we basically gave you the contract. Uh, we, we delivered it to your school. Um, and this year, we would have to do it through our muni system, um, muni system, which will be, again, a new thing. And then we got to get people to return it. So... There, the turnaround time might be a little greater this this year, um, so we um, we're, we're not at the point where we're actually preparing the contracts, um, but we're very soon going to have to prepare the contracts, um, and it's not an atypical approach to give a contract with this year's salary, and then if the school board for whatever reason chooses to change the salaries up increase that they would receive a an amendment to the contract with that new number i don't know if we're there yet but um today uh, right before this meeting i had a meeting with um uh seven superintendents um around the state and we were brainstorming this um uh, this the same question and some of us weighed that as as a possible action Thank you. All right, um, Ms. Healy, do you have any questions for Dr. Kisner? Well, I do have a question and it has to do with recruitment. Are we actively recruiting teachers for next year? Do we yes. know what number we may need based on the retirements? Last week, we, at, uh, last um, Tuesday, um, we had 140, which is actually a lot less, 140 either, uh, 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 we had 140 vacancies due to either retirement or people uh, leaving our system. Um, I did not get an update today. We're actually seeing less openings than we've had in the past, which I'm hearing is true and pretty much uh, uh, every school system as people are just a little bit more nervous about job security um, and moving that some people, I, I can't give you an exact number, but Patrick has shared with the leadership that there have been in the last couple of weeks, people rescinding their retirement or resignation letters. Ma Madam Chairman, if I may, my, my question had to be, are, are we actively recruiting right now? for next year's positions. We recruit every year. We, we never stop recruiting. We're having a lot of recruitment, online recruitment fairs, online interviews with staff, with potential staff. That's all my questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, Ms. Young, do you have any questions for Dr. Kisner? Can you hear me? You need to turn off the, the there's a lot of feedback. <laughs> Ms. Young, you want to try again? Everything is turned off on this side, so it's going to be on mute. It's not working. How many questions do you ask you? <laughs> it's 
it's hard to hear this feedback. Mm -hmm. and, and an echo. Echo chamber. Maybe we can put it in chat. She can type it out on the chat feature. It's better. If you could walk even further away, it'll yeah, probably be The only question I have, and I'll, I'll be real quick and then I'll listen. Uh, too bad I can't give my little speech and um, on the things that I went through and all of that. But basically, I want to know about training um, for the teachers, uh, virtual training, and if we are planning on putting in that in the budget or is it too late? Okay. So... This year, most of the training has been learning by doing, to be truthful. We did have that week, in some cases, two weeks, where teachers were able to do um, some collaboration and learning. And Jay and his team and the um, RTIs have been more than terrific in providing support and, and training for people um, for the specific task in front of them. But to, to, to answer you, the greater, well, not the greater question, but moving forward and really the greater challenge for us, we absolutely need to implement um, for the uh, FY uh, 2021 school year. And, and that includes the summer learning and moving forward, um, uh, much more training in the uh, virtual online uh, distant learning arena. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Randall, you're up next. Thank you. Um, my question is, um, you handed out, you said 5,400 um, Chromebooks thus far, and you can see that Google Classroom is uh, being utilized more. Do you know or have numbers as to whether it's being used more in the elementary, the middle, or the high. And also, um, are the, are, you had mentioned in the last meeting that there are some families that uh, would like more than one Chromebook because they have more than one child, child in their home. And, and are you, we, what kind of criterion, I know we have priority, but what kind of criterion are we using when we're handing out our Chromebooks? Okay, so let me just give you a little numbers too. I don't have the question about the answer for elementary, middle, and high school, but I do have some data. Google Classrooms before spring break, we had 2,100, and now at the end of last week, we had 4,000, just to give you the idea of the increase. Um, so we actually have enough Chromebooks to distribute for anyone that asks for it um, because our Chromebooks – you know, we, we're not truly a one-on-one -on -one where kids take them home. So they're in our schools. So um, so the criteria really has been people to ask. One of the um, exercises that we're going to have to go through, and this was something I believe was asked at uh, one of our previous board meetings, is the collection process. Um, but, you know, there's, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll address that um, at, at another time. So um, they inform... Uh, uh, right now, m most of the people that are seeking it, although I have to tell you, it's really slowed down. Last year, we, last year, last week, um, or the week, before, two weeks ago, we gave out 5,300 Chromebooks. So in the last week, we've only, uh, that's only increased by another 100. Um, so I think right now, um, I, I, we may not see many more people asking for it. Madam Chair, that's all. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Ms. Hollerback, do you have any questions? No, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Um, Dr. Kisser, I just have um, one broad question, and I was trying to make sure if I understood. Have, has there been any um, discussion more at the state level about the class size reduction or any um, – uh, 
you know, anything about the class size reduction, whether waiver or anything about that. And if you covered that, I may have missed it, but that's just something I know we've talked a lot about. I was just curious if you're hearing anything at the state level regarding that particular program. No, that's a great question. So the only thing that Dr. Lane said today that if it's not on the list, then the governor hasn't talked about as a change. So that was not on the list um, unless it was an oversight. So I don't have anything to suggest that that's uh, targeted to change. Great. I And believe me, I was not suggesting for it to be on there. It was more if we had heard yeah. you know, anything to that, um, you know, to that effect. So, all right. Um, with that, I think we will move on to our consent items. And then remember, we will reserve a, an opportunity for Dr. Kisner to speak after that, um, after there has been approval. Is there a motion to approve consent? Can we uh, a motion to approve the consent items all at once? Items yes. 8.01, 8.02, and 8.03. Second motion to approve the consent agenda. All right. Um, is there any discussion? Yes. Yes, Ms. Oliver. Uh, Do we not have any um, resignations or appointments? Uh, Dr. Kisner is going to speak after we uh, approve the consent agenda. He asked for a moment to speak after that. Regarding that item? You, yes. you, should, you should have some. You don't have. 8.02. You should approve some resignations to retirement today, did you? We I will at 8.02. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah. I'm asking. It's, it's there, it's 802. Where, where's the item? Where's the, where's the, where's the, uh, the document? It, it's attached. I, you, you have it. to, you have to log in, you know, cause it's, 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 um, only for board members to see. Oh, I went, uh, well, I thought I went in through, um, Missy's link. Maybe I didn't. Okay. I'll, I'll okay. Never, never mind. I'll, I'll go in and log in. Yeah, I think it's. I think you have to get it off of board docs through a separate, because you have to go in separately. Yeah, I, I thought I did it. This link like, usually takes me right there because I have it programmed so that it automatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, must, I must not have gone, gone in that way. That's okay. That's all right. Thank you. All right. If there's no other comments, all those in favor of approving all three items of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed to approval of the consent items? Hearing none, I will say that this that was a unanimous um, consent and Dr. Kisner will give you a, an okay. opportunity to speak. Thank you very much. One is actually action you took, I think the last meeting and, and I just forgot to do this and I wanna do it. Um, last meeting, um, Ms. Pam Kale, um, uh, submitted her retirement. I just want to read a little thing about Ms. Kale. For those who may not be aware, she's our associate superintendent um, for, uh, for learning. Pam Kale has served Stafford schools for 37 years as a teacher, building administrator, and since 2012 as a div division's instructional leader. As a principal at Garrisonville for 18 years, she led a school with high expectations for students and helped the whole community rise to meet those goals. She was recognized by the Washington Post with this Distinguished Educational Leadership Award in 2000. Um, I will note in the article that one thing she was recognized, um, she kissed a pig um, as a reward to students for meeting reading goals. As a leader in schools and in central office, she motivated her staff to not only make improvements, but to lead those changes themselves whether it be a new program, change in structural strategies, or strategies for collaboration. She has also been a leader that others want to follow quickly to publicly spotlight the hard work and successes of others and to protect her team and address concerns seriously but privately. She makes time for the little things, whether to write a personal note to colleagues on their birthdays to say thank you for, her, for contributions that have gone unnoticed by others and seek the best from all she worked with. So I've had the 
pleasure. I know all of you, well, maybe not all of you, but um, I've had the pleasure the last 19 months to work with her. And um, she surely will be missed, but if she's listening, she's still got work to June 30th. Okay. And then I do tonight, you did accept the retirement of Mr. Joe Lewis. Uh, Mr. Joe Lewis is finishing his 13th year as principal at Stafford High School. Before coming to Stafford, he had 20, 31 years in education as a teacher, coach, counselor, and administrator at the middle high school and collegiate levels across multiple states. In his tenure, he oversaw numerous big events, the construction and opening of the new Stafford High School building, two major shifts in class schedules. And um, this was last year, we had the first Stafford baseball team to win a st state um, title. Um, he gives uh, personal attention to his school community, crafting thoughtful weekly messages to his staff and picking a unique song for each graduating class to perform at their ceremony. So I want to again thank Pam and, and congratulate and thank uh, Mr. Lewis. Thank you for this opportunity. All right, we wish both of our um, colleagues well in their retirement and we thank you, thank them both for the innumerable contributions they have made to Stafford County Public Schools. Um, so we are moving on to action item 9.01, which is the approval of proposed revision to policy 5802, the superintendent's purchasing authority. Uh, do we have a motion to approve and then we can have discussion? Motion to approve. Second. All right, it has been moved and seconded. Ms. Um, Young, as the um, head of FAB, would you like to speak to this item in any way you are? Uh, yes, yeah, so this is something that we had approved um, and talked about last year, actually. And for some reason, it never made it because we had other um, um, other items that we were working on. I <laughs> don't want to name a few, but uh, so it came again. And I thought that it was uh, the best thing to do that we get it done, especially now. Um, so it went from, uh, I think, emergency from 75 to 100. And regular, I think it's from... 100,000 to 125,000. All right, um, Dr. Warner, I think you were the second. Do you have any further comments? Sorry. No, I've got nothing other to add. Are there any questions by any other board members? Madam Chairwoman, this is uh, Dr. Chase. I just wanted to um, add that we were trying to um, the superintendent's emergency purchasing authority in line with the um, county administrators. So part of the reason it got uh, pushed off till this year was to allow, was we knew that there were changes coming at the county level and we wanted ours to be in line with that. All right, any other comments or questions? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Uh, uh, any of those any opposed okay hearing none I'm going to say that the motion has passed unanimously uh, thank you we will now move on to our information items let's start with um, information item 10.01 which is the approval of the 20 uh, 2020 to 2021 annual plan for special education um, is Dr. Hummer on this call or? Um, um, yes, Madam, Chair, can make, Madam Chair, can I make a comment? Because I don't think you could have heard me earlier um, that um, all of these information items, the ones that uh, there are some of them that wanted to go to action. And I think that's what uh, Dr. Chase was talking about. So you could not hear me. Uh, do we have an opportunity to just do that now or no? This is not one of the items to be um, moved forward. I think since we've already done that, we'll just go through them one by one. It doesn't seem like okay. the, the, of, of the board. So um, okay. when fine. we get there, I know we can jump in to get to get some things. Okay. Up. Yeah, I understand this is not one. I just thought I would bring that up early. Okay, thanks. So I would really ask the board um, if there are any questions for Dr. Hummer and if they 
our um, certain questions. Remember, this will be brought back in two weeks that we can submit those questions. But if there's anybody who has a uh, burning question about this, um, please, uh, I don't know, wave your hand. Let me know. <laughs> Okay, I'm hearing, I'm not hearing anybody jump up. Dr. Ms. Has, uh, excuse me, uh, kid, um, you said to submit our questions. Do we submit them straight to Mr. Hummer, Dr. Kisner, the board? How do we do that? Let's submit them to our clerk for her to distribute so all board members can see what would be sent to Mr. Hummer. You can certainly put him on the email, but if uh, we would make sure that our clerk is aware so that she can gather any of them together for distribution for everybody um, would be my suggestion. So you're saying to Dr. Kisner, correct? Dr. Kisner and, and Missy? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. I'd like to just give Dr. Hummer an opportunity. Please know you do not have to give a PowerPoint presentation, but is there any couple sentences or anything that you feel that it, it is critical for the board to know? Um, I give you the floor for a short <laughs> amount of time if there's anything. If not, that's fine, but I just wanted to make sure we gave you that opportunity. Yes, ma'am, no, I'll keep this very brief. I did provide um, the board with a, um, a breakdown of this application, so that should hopefully answer any of your questions. This is a annual plan that we do every year. Um, there hasn't been very many changes to it, but if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. All right, I'm not hearing any that are coming verbally tonight. That does not mean there may not um, come uh, some your way in the following two weeks. I would ask though that board members try and submit those um, questions within the next week to give staff sufficient time to be able to respond. So moving on to our next item is 10.02. This is the appro approval of the local plan and budget for the um, career and technical education. And I would, um, uh, approach this the same way. Are there any uh, particular questions that um, board members have at this time? I don't have any questions, Madam Chair, but I just wanted to make sure that um, my colleagues, um, school board members know that this is very important, especially uh, now. Um, Madam Chairwoman? Uh, my only my only comment is just am I correct that this like any other grant um, if we get it we don't necessarily have to take it and I, I only say this I, I don't I certainly hope this won't be the case but it's my understanding that we have to match the funds so if we find ourselves financially strapped and are unable to match the funds we can still submit the grant now we aren't necessarily tying our hands at this point financially is that correct I'm going to defer that to Mr. Fulmer I, uh, instead of answering myself. So I'm going to Mr. Fulmer or Dr. Kisner. Yeah. So these are the, I'll, I'll let, uh, th these these are funds that every locality receives. Um, it's it's to support what things that we're already doing in the CTE area. Um, so uh, I'm not really I can't think of a can't think of an example why we would not accept these pl these funds. But I'll, I'll defer to Chris with that answer. Uh, I agree with Dr. Kisner. I don't have um, anything specifically to share. Um, I I don't recall. I, I am going to make the assumption that yes, we can, but we can confirm that um, before next week that if we wanted to. Um, turn down the funding that we would still have that opportunity. Good evening. This is Dr. Strike. Um, and I, I'm representing Dinah, uh, who writes this every year. Uh, we, we did bring it for information so you could look at the grant, and there is a local match, and it's all listed in, in this very extensive grant package. So you can see um, it's not an exact match local. Um, our Perkins grant, our Perkins grant is immense in terms of equipment that we uh, use every year 
uh, in our CTE programs. So um, she spells it out pretty clearly, but of course we would be willing to answer the ratio and the percentage of match um, if you want to forward those questions, if that's any help to you all. Thank you. Are there any other questions by board members? All right, then I think we'll move. Okay, I think we'll move on to item 10.03, which is the 2021 Stafford Head Start and Early Head Start COLA and Quality Grant application. Are there any questions? Uh, I believe Ms. Nassie is on. Um, yeah. Are there any questions? Ms. Yes, Jackson, yes, Chairwoman. Um, I wanted to know when you do, um, when you send this in, when do you have to start using the funds or have to get it ready? I'm just trying to figure out concern that if if we don't start in August, like what would be the uh, ramification to that? Okay, as far as ramifications for the um, Head Start grants, they have been very um, proactive in letting us, telling us that even if we don't use all of our funds for this year, we can certainly extend it easily. Um, the, they're waiving a lot of the normal regulations and doing extensions on a much easier basis than in the past. As far as starting next year's grant, um, that would be um, something we would be looking at more. Um, technically, this grant starts August 1 and covers all of next school year. So that's something we would be addressing more this time next school year when it looks like we're not, not able to use all those funds kind of thing. Okay, Ms. Massey. Uh, Ms. Massey? Yes. Is that me echoing again? Okay. If you don't know so am i is it, is, does it yes. fall under that coronavirus relief act at all or if you don't know no the, the corona just, the coronavirus act relief is actually um we've got a summer program that we could possibly run coming out of that okay good to know are there any other questions for um Ms. Massey about this particular agenda item. And again, we will re we will look at this in two weeks. For um, Madam Chair, this is Dr. Chase. Um, my only just just a question for the board to consider is, is that this grant includes a 2% COLA increase. Um, and it's my understanding that the state is not providing us with funds for a salary increase for all of our other employees. Um, so I don't know where we're going to be with that in terms of the budget. So it's just something for us to keep our eye on. Um, and relating to that, there have been years when we've gotten this COLA grant and did not use it for salary increases because Stafford schools did not give a salary increase. And so, and there've been years when we've gotten salary increases and there was no COLA from the federal government. So we, they allow us to use it for other things. I just have to give a very good rationale why. And I think we've got a really good rationale why right now. Great, thank you so much for that clarification. And I'll just add to clarify. So this grant doesn't necessarily give that COLA to the employees. That action is still need to be taken by the board during the budget process. Exactly. All right, I appreciate those clarifications. Any other questions for Ms. Massey about this particular item? All right, board members, we will see that in, in two weeks time. Ms. Massey, you're still on um, with our 10.04, the approval of the Head Start and Early Head Start refunding applications and our Policy Council bylaws policies annual self-assessment. I believe you have something to present to us so I will turn it over to Ms. Massey at this time. I would ask just because of our um, new format, if you would reserve board members your questions till the end of Ms. Massey's presentation, I think that will be easier. So just take your notes um, for any questions that you may have at the end. That would be, um, I think the easiest way uh, to proceed. So with that, I'm gonna have Ms. Massey get started. 
Okay, and um, I appreciate the opportunity to present all of this. As you know, um, from years past in presenting and for new people, this is required by the federal government as your official training. So um, you're being trained. <laughs> um, so as you can see, this was the ribbon cutting for our new um, North Star Center that we are so excited to have. And they, we've had a really fantastic year up until now, and we still are just virtually. Um, but we've really enjoyed that new facility. So um, next. Next. <laughs> so some pictures of the new facility and then our goals. Um, again, we always have the goals to improve the quality of our facilities and to make sure that they're ADA compliant and to improve our transportation services. So there's specific objectives um, in the document for those and then to increase our student success in kindergarten is the goal of the head start program and so <clears throat> we want to make sure that 100 percent of our students demonstrate growth in the areas that the um, federal government requires and so we look really hard at um, making sure that happens and then to engage parents um, in our literacy and math activities our parenting, attendance plans, and the ongoing health care of their students, their children. And then to provide our highly qualified instructional staff and services for children who are ELL learners and students with disabilities. And then always to look for opportunities to expand services to children um, pre-K um, as funds become available. Next. And then our goal three is training, which is part of what you're getting right now. Um, staff training and parent training, board training, and um, as well as staff training. Next. These demographics are from last year because we are still in the middle of serving children this year. So um, they're here for you all to um, peruse at your leisure. But um, just some of the highlights we do serve a lot of different languages um, and <clears throat> a lot of um, children with um, risk factors that could create trauma for them. Next. For the health services that our children um, received last year, we had several that were um, that needed glasses and that had asthma, as you can see, some hearing issues. Um, again, overweight and obesity continue to be some of the struggles that our children and families are facing. Next. Next. One of the huge um, things that our program works on, go back one slide, please, is the social and emotional skill development of our children because we know to be ready for kindergarten in life, they need these skills most. And so we have lots of curriculum and, and disciplines that we use to help our children. Al's Pals is a curriculum that we use to teach um, skills. Conscious Discipline is an overarching curriculum that we use in all aspects. We measure and um, work with the children on their skills for the DECA, which looks at attachment, initiative, and self-regulation as resiliency skills. And then we work with social skills groups to help them, students who are having trouble in those issues um, beyond the classroom. As you can see last year, our attachment and initiative in the green and our self-regulation skills um, doubled or more than doubled. And the red, which is the students who are still having difficulty in that area went way down. The blue area is typical and the green is um, above expectations. Next. We also measure our family outcomes. And in most of these areas last year, we saw a lot of growth, almost a whole point when you're measuring on a scale of one to five. Um, so a 20% growth in a lot of areas, including finances and employment, um, family advocacy and um, connection to the communities, and then engagement in the transitions into um, kindergarten as well as from early Head Start into Head Start. Next. 
parent involvement continues to be a huge push of the program. And so um, we had 191 parents volunteer last year. 50% um, attended a health education and 89% attended a parent education meeting. Um, so we had quite a bit of um, parent involvement in those areas. And then we had our family literacy nights continued to Mondays each month, one Monday at Rising Star and one Monday at North Star each month. Next. We looked at two different, way, several different ways of measuring our children's um, progress. But one way is through our own PALS that we give in the fall and the spring. The yellow lines, which are hard to see, are the ones, if they're between the yellow, that means that they are at the age expectation. The blue line was the fall, and it's very interesting to note how high the lowercase um, alphabet skills were. This assessment is given about a month and a half into school, and we start with teaching lowercase in zoophonics. So you can see where that jump in the fall, um, already they're up there. And then the pink line is where they were in the spring. At the bottom is the fall kindergarten pals that we did this past fall in our kindergarten classes in the county. And then we look, we pull out our Head Start children and 93% of them passed when they went on to kindergarten where the total K pass rate was 82%. Next. These slides are for your information about the responsibilities that the school board and the policy council have for the Head Start program. So I'm not going to read through these. These are there for your reading pleasure. Next. Again, some more. And some more. Next. And some more. <laughs> Next. Right. This is the impasse for go back one slide I'm sorry this is the impasse procedure for our program that looks at if the school board and the policy council have issues or concerns about major aspects of the grant that's outlined there for your um, awareness next slide this is the income calculation that we page that we use to verify income the documents that we use as well as the income guidelines on the left side down here at the bottom. I don't know whether you can see on the left side, it's the Head Start um, eligibility criteria. And then on the right side at the bottom is the um, VPI, the Virginia Preschool Initiative. We use one application for both programs. And then the very, very bottom is where I verify what the staff have calculated um, which is required again by the federal government that there are two sets of eyes on these calculations. Next. This is the front page of our application and all of the um, things in the box are things that we check on. And then the second page, next. This is how we rate the applications. Once you're eligible for the program, we have a waiting list. So we rank the applicants, not by when they turned in their application, but by how heavily they um, are weighted. And these are based on risk factors in our community that policy council and that you all approve when you approve the plans that are included in your packet. So um, for instance, our community assessment says that we don't have an, a regular system of public transportation that goes everywhere in the county. So not having a vehicle gives you points because that makes you at risk for not having a good job or for not being able to get where you need to go in our county. So again, these criteria that give the applicants weights are based on our community and our community assessment. Next. And this is a website that has all the federal Head Start regulations lots of our information about our program and also about early childhood in general. So I urge you to look at that website and look at some of the webinars and videos and things that they have there as well as the rules and regulations. And again, some more pictures from our new North Star Center. Next. 
And again, um, we'd like to thank you very much for all your support for our children, our families, and um, for what you do for Stafford Schools. And there's Dr. Kisner with our First Lady of Virginia. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. I guess I should ask Dr. Kisner to make sure that he wears his Head Start T-shirt on one of his um, on one of your days. Absolutely, you hear that, Kathy? I have your package waiting for you. We'll be there. Thank you. Are there any questions uh, from board members of uh, Ms. Massey about uh, her her quick review of of Head Start? Uh, if nobody has questions, I have one. Yeah, Madam Chair, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so I love, uh, uh, Ms. Massey, I love the fact that the numbers are looking much better from last year in terms of race. Uh, you know, I can't remember the numbers, but it looks like it's 50-50, 138 whites, 118 black, and then you had 51 biracial. So that's great. I know we talked in the past about the search, how we search for these these kids, because a lot of these kids in the beginning when we talked, it was, you know, trying to put information in doctor's offices. And one of the issues that some of these uh, parents, the children don't go to doctor's offices. So my question is, is there a correlation in the numbers that we're looking at with the the, 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 the children in our society right now and what is presented here. So, so say for example, free lunch, um, black and brown, poor kids. Is this a true correlation of what we have in our society? 50-50, is that, is that what is represented in our school system, you know, in the Head Start program before they, become, be, they come into the school system? It's just in, in the numbers that we're looking at. That's been the very close to 50-50 for several years now. Um, as far as what it represents in Stafford County, no, it's a much higher ratio in the poverty populations, unfortunately, than it is in the, if you look at the Stafford County, if you look at our community assessment that's in your packet, it shows you the ratios for Stafford County as well as the ratios for Head Start. So, so you're saying- Does that answer your question? So are you saying that there are more of a certain race in our society that is not represented here? That, that's what I'm trying to find out. Is this actually a real uh, representation of our county, these numbers? You're telling me no. I think, I think it's a very, I think it's a very good representation of the poverty in our county, yes. Good, thank you. Are there any other questions for Ms. Massey? Well, um, if not, I would just like to make sure that um, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't draw your all's attention to the goal number one of um, Head Start. It talks a lot about access and the Melchers building and um, funding of some of those projects. I just hope that the board um, thinks over some of these projects, I will tell you one um, that I actually think is one we have to do is having the um, handicapped access to the front of the building at Melcher's. I really think that is um, very important. I know we've got to do some other things there and also the um, elevator. So I'm just <laughs> never wanting to make sure that we forget um, that Melcher's and you know all of those we need to make sure we are in compliance so just throwing those out for the board's consideration as we you don't have to i'm with you <laughs> so um all right thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you ms massey for um for joining us this evening um moving on to 10.05 the approval of the nomination of the virginia star program at brook point for, uh, for, for the VSBA's Excellence in Workforce Readiness Award. Let's see. Sorry, I've got two. Dr. Strike, did you want to speak to that at all?
Thank you. I was unmuting my mic. Um, so the due date is May 1st, and because it's VSBA, it requires board approval. This is a really um, exciting program that has been established at Brook, uh, Brook Point High School. It's been in place for a number of years, and we submit it um, because of the support of the school board and continuing to um, reinforce the STAR program and how their community uh, uh, access and outreach with refurbishing com um, computers. It's rather timely right now. Um, and also the fact that they, the students are learning while they do it. I wanna highlight one point as you consider it for information and approval for submission for the competition at VSBA is the fact that our own technology department also sponsors internships with these IT students at Brook Point. Thank you. And I just wanted to second that. And some of these kids are actually working in um, in our community, actually at the school system after they graduated. So this is this is awesome. I'm excited. Um, Madam Chair, I just would like to see if we could just go ahead and move that to an action since the deadline is May 1st, it would seem that it would be um, better to, to not delay this until the next board meeting. And I will second it. You need a second. Um, is it the will of the board to move forward? It, we have a, um, it appears a motion on the table to move this particular uh, item to action. Uh, any discussion? All right, hearing none, then I will um, ask that we vote on the motion to bring item 10.05 and move that to action. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are, are there any opposed? Hearing none, I will say that was unanimous. Is there a follow on motion? Madam Chair, I move to vote on uh, 10 point, oh, action item 10.05. I second. All right, I've heard a second. I will let Ms. Hall determine which, <laughs> who jumped in first. Mm -hmm. So all those in favor of approval of uh, this action item, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Hearing none, I will say that was carried unanimously. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. All right, moving on. Um, to now what probably is not 10.06, but for ease of my board members, of those who may have printed it out, I'm going to use the numbers that, uh, that are currently in our agenda. 10.06, which is the approval of the renewal of the license for Read 180 System 44. Are there any questions? Um, are there any questions? Madam Chair, this is Ms. Randall. I have a couple of questions. Um, the first is, I've heard of this. I understand how this program works, um, thanks to a very generous student at Dixon Smith. Um, but I would like to know how many students uh, in grades six through eight are we reaching? Because it says that this is for students that are reading two grade levels below. And I'd, so I'd like to know how many students are we reaching in the county with this system? How long have we had this system? And how do we know how it is working for our students? I, I can provide, this is Dr. Strike. I can provide, um, it probably would be best since this is an information item, I can bring, provide you all with some information to examine um, between this school board and our next school board. I think you'll be very impressed uh, with READ 180. It was an investment that just so you have a perspective prior to the report, it was an investment that you all approved last year and it went into um, 
uh, implementation beginning in September. It is also a resource just to keep in the back of your mind parts of this resource some of our students are actually accessing right now from home. Pieces of the uh, curriculum are digital. But I will provide you all with a, a rather thorough report and feedback from our school leadership also. Thank you. Madam Chair, can I ask um, Dr. Schreich? Oh, were you getting ready to ask a question, Dr. Chase? I was, but you can go ahead. Oh, oh okay. Um, the only um, comment or question, actually, if you, that's the next question that's going to come in. Do you have any comparison from the year before to this year in terms of how many students were helped? And what you got out of it, that will be great also. Then you don't have to go back and get it because that's going to be a question now. So, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much. Uh huh. And then I had a, a question. Um, as I recall, the state set some requirements for us with respect to uh, meeting the needs of dyslexic students. Does READ 180 uh, end up fulfilling some of those requirements? I can I can include that, Dr. Chase, in the report. I can tell you, and you know, we've had so many conversations on this, but a, a student with dyslexia, there are a number of different resources, depending on that type of dyslexia um, that we have in place that assist them. But I will include some analysis for you specifically on this resource. Um, if that's helpful. But I, what I'll also do is include our approach to working with those students because it, it is a combination and collaboration between Dr. Hummer and our work in learning and organizational development. Thank you. Just another, oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Kisner. Um, just another feedback or um, comment, Dr. Did, is there also a possibility in here that that fluency um, piece um, that this helps some of the um, um, second language learners? Yes, um, and there's extensive research provided to us and a lot of professional learning and coaching um, that has encompassed all areas of our, our student populations um, that you're all you know, um, concerned about right now. So we can include that analysis also, but that's been a big topic of conversation. Of course, this has been in our middle schools. So I really think it's important for you all um, that our, we get some comments from our middle school folks who are using this and our middle school leadership who actually our principals have been very much a part of the coaching sessions and the professional learning. Okay. Thank you. I need to say something, please. Um, I started off by talking about the number of children that we are going to have that are already. Why do we have Read 180? Because the data for Stafford is already showing that prior to Read 180, we had a significant number of children. We already went over the SRO results, but there's other assessments are behind in reading, behind in literacy. Now, with this closure since early March, and who knows when we're really going to be able to do face-to-face -face instruction, we're going to have, unfortunately, the research, the articles I've been sending you, we're going to have more kids that are further behind, the, the loss of learning. I also know that I have Jan working on many very important projects, and I know that Jan will write a dissertation for you if that's what you want. So my only request is to please narrow the question that you want her to answer. And Jan, I do not want you to spend hours on this um, because I know what other things that you're working on. So I understand the board is asking to approve a $188,000 item. I understand that. Um, this is not a program that we are bringing to you for the first time. We vetted this out, discussed it. We've done presentations. It's a well-established research-based program. Um, and um, so I have two competing needs. One, this only was in effect in September. Now we're in April, we stopped in March. Um, and secondly, we have a lot of children that are benefiting and will benefit like other communities. And I also don't want Jan to spend a significant amount of time on this at home when I know she has other things 
that are very much pressing. Thank you. Madam Chairman, this is Ms. Healy. Yes, I, I would like to see in that report, if the data is available, the uh, number of students that we have that were identified as reading of more than two grades below the grade level in those years and how we have been able to reach them this year. And if the information is available, statistics on what populations those students, um, you know, are, are from, because there may be other items that we need to do in addition to this, this read program for them. And I, I understand that's only going to be the students from this year, but that's, that's fairly significant. Um, or let me say very significant to me if a student in grade six to eight is reading two grades below grade level, because it tells me that we've got, we've got a bigger problem if, if they were in Stafford County's public schools for the, the years prior to that. So if that information is available, I'd like to see that. I'm not asking you to gather it or do a lot of work for it, but if it is available, please include that in the, um, the briefing you're going to send us. Thank you. Before, before I try and wrap, are there any other questions um, from board members? If not, let me try to see if I can summarize the information that we are looking at, um, understanding the balancing of everybody's um, workload at this point. It seems like there is a uh, sense of the board to try and identify and understand the magnitude or the numbers of students that are going to be um, impacted or identified to be used for this program. Like, how did it start? Of course, I know you can't project, but you may, um, based on stuff saying it, we may need this more, you know, just give us your sense of how this will be used going forward would be part of my um, concern to the extent there's a breakout of um, uh, the students um, background, again, being very cautious of how that information is being used. Um, I think the other piece is how can it be used, especially in this new environment with the um, computer? Like to me, that can be a paragraph, just can it be and how can it be used? Because that may become something we may to need to be exploring further. I'm sure that's some part of it. Um, or I'm sure I've missed something else. I was trying to take my notes on my piece of paper. Um, is there anything else? Try not to have, again, Dr. Strike write volumes on it, but to definitely give the board some idea of the use and the need is sort yeah. of what I'm trying to identify. So all of my, all of my um, conversation was comments basically in support of this program and the fact that we are going to be needing it even more. And, uh, but um, I also wanted to know uh, if there is a need for um, the access. I don't, I'm not sure how the access is given. So is there a need, do you need internet or a, additional, is this amount is going to, is this going to cover it? And, and, and if not, that's one of the questions I think we need to know because we're going to have more kids, but I'm talking about internet. If there's internet use usage and all of that stuff that we need to think about that we need so that we could um, get that working because more people are going to be needing uh, to use this. Uh, again, let me just... Dr. Kisner, can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, um, when you just, you hit on a really good point about, you know, needing it and, and the kind of student, you know, the learning gaps that we're going to see for next year. Um, how, and I heard Ms. Strike, uh, Dr. Strike uh, touch on this, um, that the administrators are doing the professional development, but do you have a plan in place since we have, if we go forward with this and we see the larger gaps, do you have a plan in place to professionally develop more teachers to be able to use this? Or can you tell me um, how, how are we gonna get more people trained? Or, I'm not sure how that works. Well, the administrators are not doing the training. The company does the training. Okay, there's outside consultants doing the training. I think what Ms. Dr. Strike was saying is that the, the principals could give 
again, let, let me just frame the multiple questions that are being asked. I have Ms. Healy, who wants to get a background of the number of children who are two years and behind. I have questions about what do we need to do moving forward. Then we started off with the question about the number of children at the middle school that are using this program. So I guess I'm really just asking, I think the topic should be on the, I think an agenda topic for the school board, which I would love to have, is what are the learning needs of our students? And we could go specifically for this purpose in the area of reading. Um, so I'm just trying to help, because I have asked Jan myself for reports and I get these huge reports because I did not do an effective job of, of really targeting the question that I was trying to get asked. And I, and I want to go back to what was asked earlier. If you guys could send the questions to Missy, um, so then we could try to put them together for the purposes of the item. This is something that we have in place. We actually, you approved it for next year. This was something that the high school asked for, which we did not move forward for next year. Um, so this is just a renewal of the license. I think we've gotten to a much larger conversation remarkably important about the learning and reading needs of, uh, of our students and how many students are behind two years or more. You'll be surprised, unfortunately, maybe you won't be. It's a larger number than I think people really understand. And it's at the entering kindergarten level, walking across the stage with a diploma. So this is not something that I believe we could give you exactly what you want in two weeks um, for answering the questions about our reading these as a system. To answer uh, Ms. Randall's question, yes, I think I shared with the board that we are putting together an entire community discussion on what I'm calling recovery, because that's what the state's calling it. And that will target more than just, um, it, it's not gonna target this program. This program may be part of the, will be part of the, um, a, a solution, but it's not going to be the sole program or sole strategy. So I guess for the purposes of getting this agenda item uh, acted on in two weeks, I would like maybe to ask you respectfully as a board, what questions do you want answered to help you make a decision on this? And then what other questions are there that are pertaining to the reading needs of our children and have that in a separate budget item? That would be my my hope. If I could, um, the main question I would have about the specific agenda item is in light of what's going on here, does the license, is the license sufficient if we have additional users? Is it a user based or is it we just renew it? To, that was I my know. question. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Again, what I would just ask is please forward the questions because um, I think once we see the questions in writing and if we need clarification, we want to come back in two weeks and making sure we're asking the we're answering the questions that you really have. Um, and I would just ask you respectfully again to because we have I, I see this two different questions being asked. One about our entire reading needs, which is a great question absolutely want to have that question discussed and then specific to this program. And if you send it to Missy, then Jan could come back um, to you and just say, let me make sure this is exactly what you want. So in two weeks, you get your answers to your questions. Yes, I'll be happy to do that. Madam Chairman, this is Ms. Healy again. Does that mean we have to put our questions that we asked a few minutes ago and that you summarized, do we need to put those in writing tomorrow? Or are they understood? What I'll ask is uh, if Ms. Hall by, you know, in the next couple of days can go back to this particular section of the, um, of the tape and transcribe the questions um, and uh, we can circulate them uh, among the board members. How about that? Thank you. All right. In that same, or any other, uh, I think we've concluded on this one. Let's move on to 10.07, which is the renewal of the license for Lexia Learning. 
in the amount of one hundred and five thousand dollars. Are there uh, questions about this particular agenda item? Madam Chair, um, can I? What is the difference between the two? Um, <clears throat> Mrs. Randall, this is Dr. Strike again. The difference between the two. So when we talk to uh, when we talk about our middle school literacy, I'll be very I'll try to be very brief um, with this. When you talk about literacy in your middle school and you talk about response to intervention, you have tier one, tier two, and tier three. Read 180, the item that just we just had a conversation about is used in Stafford County as a tier three intervention. It's a smaller population of students who are reading two grade levels behind. Lexia is a tier two, but it can be used in tier one, two. If a teacher notices that a student uh, isn't understanding or comprehending a, a particular area. So it's used with all students and particularly used with tier two students. Does that so it's not an intensive reading program. It's a resource to support literacy. Does that help? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh-huh. Are there any other questions from board members? All right. Hearing none, again, um, if a question, burning question comes to you, also include those in um, in email to Ms. Hall and Dr. Kisner, please. All right, again, we're gonna stick with the numbering we were using, um, even though I know it will look different later. 10.08, which is the award of an underground utility location service contract for marking fiber to ProCom engineering. Um, I believe Mr. Anderson is probably on this call. Um, are there any questions regarding this particular item? Uh, the only question I have, I wanted to know where was where was where this was happening? Where were the markings for fiber and is it for the internet? Um, I think my item is later in the um, agenda. Um, mine is the Verizon easement. So you're looking <laughs> at um, this is a technology item. This is a Jay question. Yeah, all of our underground fiber in between our buildings, uh, we have to mark them for misutility, and this contract takes care of that for us. Okay. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions? I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson. I didn't mean to get you too early. I know you're on here several times, so. Um, all right, so next we will have um, 10.09, which regard, which is related to the award of internet and Metro E contracts, um, also re related to expanding bandwidth and reliability. So yes, I will get it right this time, uh, Mr. Cook, <laughs> if, uh, or Michael, if you all have any um, comments that you want to share with the board on this, or if the board members have questions, please let me know. Hi, this is uh, School Board Member Young. I, this is the question I wanted to ask was where was this going to be? Uh, these are the... We, Same th This is uh, our internet service um, for the next three years. Uh, it's um, for all of our schools, uh, it's uh, s somewhat redundant, but it gives us uh, a lot of bandwidth for our internet needs over the next three years. It's split between yeah. uh, Cox, Cogent, and Verizon. Ho hopefully more than you have right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this will increase it quite a bit. Perfect. You need it. Are there any other questions from board members? Um, my only comment, uh, Mr. Cook, I know you talked about the redundancy. Some some of us have been on the board for a long time when there was a loss of um, complete internet and many teachers lost lots of that stuff. Will this make sure that that will never happen again? Well, um, I would like to say that, but you just never know with the internet. Uh, but this is, we, we 
since we've gone to this model, we haven't had the outages of the past. It might be for 10 minutes or so, and then everything's back up because it switches over to the other service. Okay. I think this was more when they lost all of their data. I just want to make sure that we continue to make sure there is redundancy and backup, and maybe we have fixed that problem. So I appreciate it. That was a very tough board meeting to sit through. <laughs> so. Not a problem. The, um, the backup systems have been centralized for several years now on a main system. So we're, we're good there. That makes me feel much better. So, um, all right, any other board member questions on this particular item? Okay, let's move on to what is on our agenda as 10.10, .10, which is the award of a construction contract uh, to Arabolo Contracting to replace the roof at Park Ridge Elementary School, which is using insurance claim funds. Any discussion? Yeah, I would like to see if we could just move these insurance claim items, 10.10, 10.11, .10, 10 and 10.12 to action items, unless there's some issue, but these seem like important structural repairs. Second. So they would become action items, 9.3, um, 4, and 5. No, that was not approved. Oh. So if there is, if anyone would like to group these items together, it seems like there is a motion on the table and there's been a second. I'm willing to entertain that um, as a motion. And that would be taking 10.10. .10, 10.11 and 10.12 becoming 9.3, and 9.5 of an action item. All of these are using insurance claim funds. We can move them to action and then still have further discussion. Would you all would? Um, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, yes, I'd like to move 9.3, 9.4, 9.5 and to action. Let's let, let's first do the motion to move them to action, Ms. Randall, and then I think you can follow on. Let's move them first to action. We have a, let's move on that action. Okay. That. Okay. I would like to move 10.10, 10.11, and 10.12 to action. I believe Dr. Warner seconded before. Is that correct? Or no? It's it's been oh, it's been it's been, it's been yeah it's been second. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep up with everybody. So let's, um, so the board, we are voting on moving these three items to action. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Hearing none, I'm going to say that those are moving um, together. So let's look at then action item 9.3. Are there any questions about this particular item? All right, I would like to just ask Mr. Fulmer a question, and I believe this will probably um, impact each one of these. The reason that these would be subject to appropriation by the Board of Supervisors is because the funding source for these, which are insurance pro proceeds, were not included in our original budget. I just want to make sure I understand that particular um, reasoning. I believe that's correct, but Mr. Fulmer, you, can you give us an overview of that, please? Uh, that, that's 100% correct. So we do not budget for insurance proceeds because we do not know, you know, what projects we're going to have to do based on insurance proceeds. So once um, we get those insurance proceeds, then we have to ask for the appropriation to complete those projects. Uh, can I ask a follow-up question? Yes. Sure. So what happens if we take the insurance money and don't actually fix those roofs? So if the Board of Supervisors were not to give us the funds? Um, so actually, we do not have all of the proceeds yet from the insurance company. The insurance company do not pass on those proceeds until the work is um, in process, and then they do it in phases. So we may receive 25%, 50% once the work begins, and then we receive the final payouts once it's complete. Mr. Fulmer, um, this is Ms. Young. 
do you have um, backing that states that uh, if you build it or you complete it now, that it's going to be cheaper than when we do it the next time? So, Harrison. Yeah, nothing, um, nothing formal um, other than just general inflation and, and cost that we'll, we'll, uh, would incur. Um, all of these went out to a formal bid and within the last month and um, were reviewed and went to the lowest responsive bidder. So in your mind, this, it will be better to get it as soon as possible, especially now that the schools are um, closed. Yes, we would want to um, ideally complete this work while school is out of session. So during the next um, three or four months. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, this is Dr. Warner. I just have a quick follow up question to that. These low bids that were um, recognized, are they local contractors that would be um, businesses that would benefit from doing this work? I'll, I'll uh, yes. ask John if, if you know more about specific about these vendors. I'll just say from a procurement perspective, um, we we post on our website and we post on the state website. Um, so our intent is to get the lowest um, potential bidder. Yes, and they are from um, the general area. They've done projects for the school system before. Um, for both of the roof projects. Thank you. All right, having um, heard that discussion and just so that we all understand in case we would like to um, reach out to our counterparts concerning these items, should we approve them as a board, um, I am certainly open for um, a motion to be made. I believe, um, I don't know if I, Ms. Boatwright, are, um, do we need to vote on these individually or can we vote on them in a block? I recommend that you vote on them individually. Okay. okay, so the first one is what, uh, 4.9? Uh, uh, 993 is the award of the construction to... Okay, yes. motion, to motion to approve, 9.3. Second. second. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. Is there a second motion? Motion to approve nine point, I mean, yeah. Nine. Nine, nine point four. four. <laughs> Thank you. Second. Was, was there a second? second? I'm sure there was yes. one. I seconded, Dr. Warner. Thank you. All right, any discussion about the roofing project at Hampton Oaks Elementary School? Could, could I get some clarification about the additional work that's being proposed for the um, gym, gym roof? Uh, yes, this is John Anderson again. And um, the alternate that we bid for the gym roof um, is so that we can uh, complete the entire project um, that complete the entire roof. That's a 28 year old roof. So it's really reached its useful life. And uh, most of the roof is covered by insurance, but the gem roof didn't have enough damage um, to be covered. And so we would like to do that now while the roofers are on site and uh, it'll be less expensive to do it that way if, um, if that's funded at this time. All right, any further questions? And thank you for that clarification. For any of us who may have gone through the hail storms, they may know how that works. Um, I did with my roof, so, and we got the whole roof done ourselves. Um, if not, all those in favor of 9.4, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries unanimously. Moving on, um, is there a motion regarding New agenda item 9.5. I'd Motion like to, to approve. Second. All right. This is relating to replacing the cafeteria flooring, also using insurance claim proceeds. Are there any uh, questions concerning this item? All right. Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously. I'm going to call it out as item agenda item 10.13. I know it's going to be a new number, but this is related to the contract to Eastern Waterproofing and Restoration in the amount of one million two ninety six two hundred using VPSA spring borrow funds for the repair of the exterior envelope phase one at North Stafford High School. <laughs> Are there any questions about this particular item? Madam Chairman, this is Ms. Healy. Uh, does anything in this item have to do with the health or safety or welfare of the students at North Stafford? And, and if that, that could be provided for the next meeting, uh, I'd like to get that information. I can, um, I can give you a little information about that. Um, this is John Anderson again. And um, the um, brickwork is, is cracking. And so um, I would say that it's a potential safety issue. I know that there was, um, I heard there was an earthquake that um, a portion of the upper wall came down um, in one area of the building. So I would just say it's a, a potential safety issue. There's, there's nothing that it's going to um, fall off on its own that we can get at this point, but it's in um, pretty bad shape. I have a question. Mr. Anderson, secondly, you don't know for sure that um, it is not going to cause some kind of uh, problem uh, sooner than later. I, um, I can't say that because there could be another earthquake or um, issue like that, but um, there's nothing that is, um, there's, there's cracks and um, definitely issues with the brickwork and it's mostly the upper part of the wall uh, where they've had the problem. And um, this is Irene. Is was this project included in the the three R um, list? Yes, that was on a um, previous three R list. So where where was it? Where was it on that list? Was it high up, as in it needs to be done right away, or was it at the bottom saying that we can wait for a little bit? This was. Um, this was on a previous 3R list, so it's been approved as far as that is concerned. It wouldn't show up on your most current 3R list. Uh, it's already been in the planning stage and, is, is in, and has worked its way through the process. Um, so now it's um, in line for VPSA funding. And ha have the Board of Supervisors kind of blessed this too? I'll let Chris answer that if, if you would like. This is Chris Fulmer. Um, Yes, Ms. Hollerbeck, when they approved the initial um, release of the or um, posting of the VPSA bond borrow and the public hearing for that, this project was listed on there as well as one of the um, other items on our list farther down. Um, I will say that um, they are looking at not using the spring VPSA bond borrow money. They are going to use, they're looking at creating savings and FY21's budget by pushing this borrow to F the fall and actually using cash funding now. So they're not pushing the projects. They have not shown, from all the meetings that I've seen, there's been no discussion of pushing the actual projects, just the funding source. We're gonna borrow the money and reimburse our cash that we're gonna use. Um, uh, and when I say our cash, the county cash, we're gonna go ahead and cash fund the projects now. So would it move us to wait on this until we know what the board of supervisors are going to do with the budget? Um, I would say at, at this point, um, the board of supervisors hasn't shown any intent to delay these projects, just delay the funding until the fall. Um, but like I said, we're going to use cash now and then borrow the money to replenish the cash. And that creates debt service savings because we won't have um, debt for those six months. Okay, thank you. Madam Chairman, if, if no one else has another question, this is Ms. Healy. I'd like to follow up on a question with Mr. Fulmer. Sure, go ahead. Um, Mr. Fulmer, you said we would use cash now. Whose cash would we be using? So uh, the county, I've had discussions with them already. They're, they're looking at some of their own cash versus, um, so we have pooled cash from a school division standpoint and the county um, so like we have the excess cash that's in the health benefits fund that we don't have access to that cash. It is technically um, in the county's um, 
um, cash accounts. It's shown on our financial records. Um, so we've started the discussion this week with the county about where those cash sources would come from. But ultimately, it um, would all be replenished once we borrow the funds in the fall. But the exact, uh, to clarify, the exact funding source for the cash hasn't been specified. As far as I'm aware right now, we just had preliminary discussions about which fund balance it would come out of in the interim. If I may, Madam Chairman, follow up. Uh, are you saying that could come out of the health benefits fund, potentially? Uh, the excess cash balance that's being held there, so it's not actually impacting um, the health benefits fund specifically. It's just um, a uh, where we hold the cash at currently. Okay. I understand that. But with respect to that money, could that be not be used for something other than this project? I mean, this is a discussion we're going to be having when we're working on the budget, I'm sure. Um, but I'm speaking for myself. I'm, I'm concerned about committing this amount of money. And I know it's on for information, um, but I, I, I would like to have some more uh, information with respect to the funding of this if we do not use the spring borrow funds for it. Uh, would that be available by the next meeting when this came back for action? Um, I believe so, yes. I'll point out and I'll let John weigh in on this. I think this was one of the items that was going to be requested to move to action at tonight's meeting. Um, but I'll let John weigh in on the timing. Uh, yes, that's correct. Um, the way we've scheduled the project is the bulk of the work will be done over the summer on the front part of North Stafford High School and um, particularly around the entrances and the project goes into um, the rest of the, the school year on the back of the building, but we would like to complete the um, front portion of the building and um, that's um, cutting it tight. Um, it, it's uh, it's already going to be going into the school year, but we'll be, um, as I said, at the back of the building. I'm going to make a, a, a comment, and it is, again, not about the project. I personally feel uncomfortable approving a agenda item saying we are going to be using VPSA spring borrow funds when we appear not to be using those funds. It makes me uncomfortable to not know how we're going to use um, what cash we are going to be using. I um, That just makes me uncomfortable. We, um, Some of us I know may have listened to the Board of Supervisors meeting today that um, it's fairly dire. Again, I would really, ah, excuse me, I would prefer to wait the two weeks so that when we um, either approve or disapprove this item um, that we know what that funding source is going to be because I find approving an item saying we're using borrowed funds that we don't know I, I, I just am uncomfortable with that I just have to share that discomfort with the board Madam Chair this is Susan I also concur with that I'm a little uncomfortable right now um, looking at potential funding from the Board of Supervisors and expending money right now that we're really just not sure where we are. I'm, I'm not comfortable with this to move forward tonight. So uh, just for clarification, um, so we're saying that, that in general, we have several other items on here that are looking to spend money for various things. So so we will similarly treat those other items the same way. Is that correct? I, I mean, we can make the same arguments for, um, you know, uh, some of these other things. So I'll bring it up when we get to those other items. Thank you. That, uh, those would be my same comments on all of them. I think anything that we are assuming a funding source that as a board we have gotten, in my opinion, information that we will not be using that funding source makes me very uncomfortable. I, that didn't apply just to that item. It applies to any item when I feel that if we were to approve any item with a, a funding source that we may be needing to pull cash from somewhere and I'm hearing using health funds, 
I just myself feel like I need to understand that better. Um, but am I correct that that this this desire to use funds from somewhere else is coming from across the street, not from us? Is that right? I mean, it's staff across the street that suggested we do something else in order to save um, the interest for six months. Is that did I misunderstand that, or is that correct, Mr. Fulmer? This is Chris. That is correct. Mr. Anderson, I have a question, um, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Anderson, can you tell me uh, what the impact of the timeline is um, if you do not get to start timely with this? Because in one week, I'm not sure in one week what more information uh, you would need to approve or disapprove this, but can you give me a little bit more information on your timeline? Uh, yes, um, we would make it work and um, the the logistics of the project are fairly complicated um, anyway because we'll be doing a section at a time. Um, there's parts of the wall that we need to remove the brick on the upper part um, of the exterior wall. Um, that brick uh, will be removed. Um, and and um, so um, our goal is and, um, and will be, even if this is um, pushed to the next meeting, our goal is to have as much of the front of the building done uh, before the start of school in our, August. And um, we will get the walls completed around the main entrance and the um, entryways either way. So um, what I'm saying is that we'll make it work and um, you're going to see the project going on when school starts um anyway but um we're just trying to get a jump on it if we can we'll make it work if it is pushed to the next meeting okay and i have a second comment so i know that at one point in time i asked about um having that health study that never happened so when um uh when um school board member um healy asked a question about the health um, you stated, I'm not sure if you stated no, but that health assessment was never done, correct? Um, you're talking about the building condition assessment, and uh, we do have plans to update that for North Stafford High School. There are um, several projects already planned for that school, including mechanical. And so uh, we really want the assessment to consider those projects. Um, and, and we are, and, and basically the assessment that was done in the past um, pointed out some, some of these issues um, already. So, um, um, you know, that, that's something that we're going to be doing as funds are available in the future is uh, do an updated assessment for that school. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. This is uh, Madam Chair, this is Dr. Warner. I have just a follow up question. So, the, if we postpone working on beginning this work on North Stafford High School, we have we risk that the cost of doing these repairs could actually increase. So, what we're being what's being suggested is we're going to defer using borrowed funds and use cash reserves that would be paid back at in six months. So, is there um, any reason to anticipate that those funds are not going to be reimbursed through the fall VB, VPSA funds borrowing? Uh, this is Chris Fulmer again. Uh, I just want to add that the, the cash source hasn't necessarily been specified. I gave the health benefits fund as an example. That was probably a little premature. The county board of supervisors, the discussion has been that they, they would just use cash instead of borrowing the um, current spring borrow and then we would borrow in the fall to replenish that cash. So that's, that is currently what's been discussed at their meetings. And I know of, um, of nothing else. And so I just wanted to clarify that it, it very well could be that the cash is all going to come from the county, but it seems like the intent of the board of supervisors is to use cash funding until the fall borrow is complete. If, if I could make a comment, um, Mr. Fulmer, even if we, um, approve this item this week or in two weeks. We still have to take this across the street for appropriation by the Board of Supervisors. Like, if we approved it tonight, it's not that tomorrow morning a bulldozer or whatever may equipment would be starting this work. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And um, that's a, a good 
clarification is that when the board of supervisors approves this i assume at that point that they will have the funding source identified um i still i i mean and certainly um we can move this i i just i feel very uncomfortable until i have a better idea because I have to, I'm not sure off the top of my head what was scheduled for the fall borrow for next fall. What projects in there that were school projects that now may be able, may have to be delayed as well. I do not know if that, in, 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 if there is a fairy farm course. I, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry not to remember. I just really would like to see what chain of events the change of the funding has. And for myself, I would like to have two weeks to. Um, gather that information, but that is just where I am, and that is just one board member. Madam Chairman, it's Miss Healy again. Uh, perhaps we could ask uh, Dr. Kisner and Mr. Fulmer to uh, have some some feedback from the Board of Supervisors. Mr. Fulmer has talked about the uh, intention of the Board of Supervisors, and I know they're meeting you know, twice a week on the budget. And if we could get some clarification from them that they would be supporting this borrow, I would feel a lot more comfortable in, um, in voting on it. Right now, it says using BPSA spring 2020 borrow funds. And if I understand Mr. Fulmer correctly, that may not be the source of the funding. Um, and in, in the environment that we are in fiscally today and what we're looking at for the next fiscal year, I don't think it would be prudent to make a decision this evening. I, I have to agree with you, Ms. Healy. This evening. I agree with you, Ms. Healy. And oh. just, just to respond to Dr. Chase, I do have those same questions for the, the other items. And, and my question is the same. And if, if you've known me for years, you'll know I always ask, is this relate? How does this relate? to the, the health, welfare, and safety of the students on any of these projects. You know, we, we have had projects lined up, and maybe it's their turn to be at the top of the list, but things are different now. You know, the, the whole financial situation is, is much more bleak than I've seen in the past. So I'm going to be looking at every one of these uh, from a critical standpoint, and how does this affect uh, our operations, not whether it's the turn for this project or it made it to the top of the list. And most importantly, we're going to have to identify the funding for this when we approve it. Because if, if we approve something with BSBA spring 2020 borrow funds, and then it turned out that we were going to be using the health benefit funds or some other funds, I would be concerned as a school board member that that was not what I voted on and that's not what you know I was supporting. So I would I want to have that absolutely clear what funding is being proposed for each of these projects um, if they are to come back at the next meeting. Thank you. Oh. All right. Is there any um, further discussion or questions or comments about the, um, I'm sorry, the 10.13 uh exterior envelope project at north stafford high school okay let's move on to 10 point well on our current agenda or the original agenda 10.14 the award of a furniture delivery order um, in the amount of 259.56.70 using bpsa funds for phase one of the purchase of um, classroom, library, art, music, furniture as part of the renovation project at Ferry Farm Elementary. Are there any questions, I'm sure, for Mr. Um, Anderson? You're on, Mr. Anderson, tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I have a question for Mr. Anderson. Um, can, is there a, like, uh, what kinds of furniture, I, I can understand, library art and music but what kinds of furniture are we getting for the classrooms that are or i guess i don't know what's included in this it just you've given the rooms but i don't know what is what else is being furnished in the classrooms 
Um, yes, these are the first phase classrooms that are going to be completed in the front of the building. And we worked with um, the school on the selections. Um, I could provide you with more detail about um, the actual selections. Um, uh, but this, this will be the, the types of um, classroom furniture that you would see in the um, um, younger grades there. Are they slated to get all brand new furniture in the brand new classrooms? Is that what I'm understanding? Uh, yes, mostly brand new furniture for the the, uh, the new classrooms, um, particularly in, in phase one, um, because those were um, the furniture was designed along with the um, the room layouts. Yeah, comment. Were some of the uh, Mr. Anderson some of the furniture? If I remember, there were um, kind of um, styles for collaboration also. So those we, we don't currently have some of those, right? If I remember, I know, correct, I know that, that that is something that, that, that I know that that, that that is something they've been discussing in the um, furniture selection meetings, and um, they have um, nice little cubbies for the students and um, things like that that will go in the, the new rooms here. And again, yeah, this yeah. is for the, the new um, yeah, first yeah. phase that's going to be completed before we start in August. Yeah, I yeah, think I it think was in the project, project when you took the project, the, the, the way, the way how they set, they set it up was, was kind of kind of more. Um, collaboration, and I don't, I don't think, think we have, have those, those furniture, furniture currently. So, so yeah. Madam Chair, if I may, um, I have a question. Um, what is the urgency of moving this to action now? What, what, what is, why, why do we need this right now? Um, for the Ferry Farm, Farm schedule, schedule. Uh, we, we have, have the um, furniture, furniture order that needs, needs to happen uh, so that it arrives um, by sometime in July um, for installation. And then this is all for the new, um, the newly renovated part that's opening up uh, for fall classes. So the library in particular and the, um, um, the classrooms in the front of the building um, would all be outfitted. And it's just a timing issue. Um, uh, it's, it's the way the project has been planned to have furniture um, for these rooms. So um, the timing on, on this one is is actually more critical than the previous project we discussed. We really need to make the order soon to be able to get the delivery on time. We don't expect production issues, but um, we have had some production issues with a few items um, on Ferry Farm. We've been able to work around them, but we're just trying to get this done um, for school. The start of school in August, if that's when school is going to start. May, may I ask why this didn't come to us at the last meeting? Um, we had an information item on um, March 10th, I think, and um, this was mentioned at that time. Um, I don't, I don't know. I don't really have a good answer for why we didn't do an information item at the last meeting. Um, I know we discussed it briefly at the March 10th meeting um, when I had the other information item. I guess my I, I'm not I, I haven't spoken at all tonight, so I'm just going to take my little spot here. Um, the, the heartburn that I have is that if, if if we are moving stuff constantly, we we have we have rules. Yes, we kind of relaxed them a little bit for now, but the public still has has a say in what we're spending money on and things like that. So if, if if this is necessary, then that's fine. I just want us to be cognizant that if we have an opportunity to get it on the agenda for information and then and then, you know, at the next meeting we vote on it, it gives the the public an opportunity to come in and comment on it and opine and, and all these other things. I just I, I, I there's so much on this agenda tonight that if anybody is actually paying attention. They looked at it. They would be like, "Oh my gosh, why? Why is all of this on here right now?" So I just want us just to be cautious about how we're approaching things and where we can be transparent. Dr. Chase, I think you were next. Yes, thank you. Um, I just want to note that this is all part of this very large project that um, that was the fair and smart renovation. Am I correct? This money has already been appropriated. So unlike the previous item, which has not yet been appropriated, this money has already been borrowed from the PSA. Is that correct? I think that's a question for Chris Fulmer. 
No. Yeah, so the, the funds were already appropriated and approved as part of the project by the Board of Supervisors. And there is additional funding that was slated in the spring VBSA bond borrow for Berry Farm. Some of that would be for construction. Some of that would be for, for furniture, either this or the upcoming furniture. But we still have existing funds from the previous VPSA bond bar that we're expending now for the Ferry Farm project. So are you telling me that the Ferry Farm project um, may, uh, the Ferry Farm project, that all of that, some of that money has not yet been appropriated and it was supposed to be appropriated in the spring. Are we pushing that off to the fall as well? Or is that, um, or is that not happening with the Ferry Farm project? Yeah, so a very high level overview of how that project was uh, was appropriate and approved. Um, it, it's very common that the entire project or a large portion of the project is appropriated by the Board of Supervisors when they approve it, but we don't borrow all the money at once because we have started accruing interest on it right away. So we borrow the money as the project continues on. So the bulk of the ferry farm money was borrowed in um, last fall. We had some coming in then this spring, I believe is the last chunk of that and um, or was planned for this, this spring. But when, in order for us to enter into a contract with the contractor, we need the authority to actually appropriate or we need the funds appropriated so we have the authority to enter into that contract. So the Board of Supervisors appropriated the entire construction piece of the project and I believe it's 50% of furniture and then 50% of the contingency is what they appropriate. And then as we need the additional funds for furniture, they would appropriate the rest. And if we need additional contingency, if we use up that initial 50% contingency, then they appropriate the rest of it. So I guess what I'm trying to I'm suddenly occurring to me is, you know, we have board members who had issues with um, appropriating money uh, in advance of, of getting that money, it sounds to me like this might fall in the same category now. Is that true or is that not true? Um, so definitely some of the Ferry Farm money um, is slated to be borrowed in the spring borrow, which now will be cash funded instead of bond borrowed money. All right, so if, if board members were uncomfortable with that with the previous item, then presumably they will be uncomfortable with that with this item. Thank you for that clarification. I do believe, um, Chair, Chairwoman, um, I believe Chairwoman um, Hazard and uh, school board member Healy uh, were uncomfortable with the previous one, so they probably will be uncomfortable with this one. They did mention that there will be, if it's going along the same line, so yeah. And my comment, and Chris, I think Dr. Chase and I were asking the same question. So essentially this, if this 250,956 using no let me let me rephrase it does this item have to go back to the board of supervisors for appropriation it does not and that is because this is using really fall vpsa funds versus spring is that I, i'm just trying to make sure i understand it uh um Yes, because they appropriate that project 100% um, of the construction contract and then 50% of the furniture. So this is only a portion of that furniture. So they've already appropriated the funds. But in many instances, they appropriate funds before we officially have all of them. Um, just like they appropriate 95% of our budget at the beginning of the year on the operating fund side, but we don't have the cash until it's needed during the year. I, yeah, I'm still in the in the case. I would really like like to understand and make sure that it where is our funding coming from? Because if if the board of supervisors is looking at debt service in general and trying to make sure we don't borrow more, I if we had to find the cash for this, I just want to be, you know, I want to understand that again. It is not about the project. I just think that right now really watching where all that money is coming from I just personally again need more clarification before I feel like I can approve these not because of the type of project but because funding and having listened to some of the board meeting today 
a lot of changes are coming. Madam Chairman, this, this is Ms. Healy. I would like to get some information if this is to come back to us at the next meeting, and that is whether this particular furniture would be furniture that we would purchase in the event that the remaining 50% of the money for furniture has does not get appropriated. Because as I understand from Mr. Fulmer, we now have 50% of the furniture budget. Uh, and, and that can be used that is within our uh, control and has already been borrowed. That's very different from a borrow that is projected potentially for the future. But only 50% has been appropriated to us. So if we were not to get the remaining 50%, which I hope is not the case, but if it were, is this the furniture we would be buying? I, I would hazard a guess that it would be Perhaps yes, because it's furniture for a new classroom that has no furniture at all. It's the library art and music, and that's a very critical part, you know, of this renovation. And when we all go to um, the library at Moncure or the library at all the schools that got the renovation, that was where a lot of the the expenditures were made, and it, it's the centerpiece of the school. So that is some information that would be helpful for me to have come back, but I think funding wise, this is a completely different situation in, in from my perspective as the um, item that we just looked at and the next two items that we will be looking at. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, this is Dr. Warner. I have a, just a question. So the uh, renovations at Ferry Farm are on schedule and based on the fact that we likely will, we're hoping to have classes start in August, these classrooms, will need furniture for instructional purposes. The library will need to be functioning for instructional purposes and um, art and music. And these funds have been appropriated and approved by the Board of Supervisors, correct? I guess that's to Chris. Yes, that's correct. Except for 50% of the furniture, right? 50% of the overall budget for the Ferry Farm furniture, um, but this is less than that 50% of that budget. Mm -hmm. I just have a, a question for um, Mr. Anderson. So um, just project management and timeline. Um, Ferry Farm will be finished. Um, the furniture is delivered. What if Ferry Farm is not finished yet, do we have storage location for the furniture? And it's not, you know, it's not either here or there. I'm sure they could find it, but it was just a, a question that I thought I would ask in case we have it ahead of time. Like, uh, we... I could get back yeah. with you on that information. Okay, that's fine. Chris, can I ask you a question? You just said that the this borrow is less than 50% of the furniture. And so therefore we have more than 50% left. But the only, are we trying to, I know you have, uh, so you're talking the K-1 hall, the um, music art library, but then the second part of this is also still that downstairs three classroom, which will be open space, plus all of the um, pullout offices. Those are still waiting for furniture to be allocated. Is that what the next portion of furniture money is for? Um, I can, maybe John can be a little bit more detailed than I can. I can say that the, when the Board of Supervisors appropriates the funds for our significant major capital projects now, they're not looking at it and say, hey, we need this much furniture by this date. They just start by appropriating the construction funds and they appropriate 50% of the furniture regardless of the amounts and regardless of when we need it. And that's because there is Furniture can have a long lead time when we order it. So uh, when the time comes that we need to order over that initial 50%, then we would have to request that additional appropriation from the Board of Supervisors. And, and the total project budget has already been approved by the school board and the Board of Supervisors. So um, typically it's just a, an additional action by the Board of Supervisors to appropriate those remaining funds. Hope that answer your question, hopefully. 
Um, I'll just yes. add that it's also okay. for the um, new addition would have also the future furniture that we're planning for the project. And this this question or comment is for Dr. Kisner. Um, so I'm okay with the furniture because you know the the kids need furniture. If indeed we're going to start school in August, if it comes down that we need to still continue physical distancing, will there be a time where we could say, okay, hold off on something or the other? Like, do we will we have enough time to pull back and, and hold off in case we get into some trouble and we need some money to do other stuff? You're talking, you're talking on these capital projects you're looking at now? Yes, sir. Well, I, I think it, yeah, I mean, I think the answer is yes, but we would have to, once we sign contracts, well, I know a school system right now that just stopped your high school project, although they broke ground and doing a lot of, did a lot of work, but they're having the same conversation every community's having, and they're concerned about um, the debt. So they are now in negotiation with the contractor, the construction company, because they have a signed agreement. They started work. They have about 80 people on the site. So, you know, this is when we would obviously bring our attorney in for conversation. I, I think, again, the board is asking great questions. My, my request is similar to the request on the reading program is so we could come back in two weeks and give you the answers to making sure we're giving you the answers to the questions that you're asking is again um i know missy could go through the tape but there's a lot of conversation going on in the last half hour i don't think that would be fair to her i would ask you to please just forward your questions sure to her okay. and then we could go ahead and get you the answers you're seeking and i do agree with Ms. healy's request um I will reach out to Mr. Foley, and I'm sure Chris will reach out to the finance people to get a sense of where they're going and how they would be funding some of these projects. That would be great, Dr. Kisner. Thank you so much. Madam Chairman, it's Ms. Healy again. I know the elder is getting late, but I just wanted to suggest that if we want to get a, a response to um, Ms. Young's question about uh, possibly uh, terminating a contract once it's been entered into that we should uh, ask our attorney for that because the situation that Dr. Kisner is referring to may be very different from a contract that is actually executed after we know uh, we're, we're in this uh, state with a... Um, yeah, the, I think I stated it. I think my statement, my answer said we would need to seek legal counsel. I believe I did say right. that. Yes, and that's what I'm suggesting. If, if Ms. Young wants to pursue that question, that, that's what I would do because there there may be some escape clauses for contracts that were entered into uh, prior to the situation we find ourselves in now. But if we were to uh, enter into a contract knowingly at this point, I, I think there may be um, a very different response. So if Ms. Young is, is interested in that, which I think is, is a very good question, that may be something we want to get the answer to before the next meeting, is we are we're potentially talking about several million dollars just for the projects you know, on this agenda this evening. Yes, thank you, Ms. Healy. Okay. Um, so with regard to this item, again, if um, you want to reiterate uh, your questions, again, send them to Dr. Kisner and uh, Ms. Hall, then they can all be compiled to share with everybody so we make sure we haven't missed anything. Um, um, let's see, so our next information item, again, using the old agenda numbering, I apologize, um, because of course I have to be, have a piece of paper. Um, it would be 10.05, which is awarding a construction contract to Field Turf USA uh, for $705,567 using VPSA bonds for the replacement of the mountain um, view high school track subject to- I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Chairman, um, Chairwoman. <laughs> Did we move these to, I didn't think we moved them to action, did we? Like, why Why did you change the number? I'm confused. 
Um, on the prior agenda, this would have been item 10.15. Then we pulled three items out. I was just thinking if people were looking, I, I didn't know if Ms. Hall had the opportunity to repopulate our agendas. I'm using a paper agenda. So I was just trying to use that one. So, but I did want to yeah. identify it by type. Couldn't it still be 10 point something though? Because it, it was never moved. Right. It would still be okay. 10 point. I, I just said 10.15 from the old or initial. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you. Um, just because I have it in paper. Um, so, um, if I, I don't, if I don't mind starting this one, usually I don't, again, I have the same, um, you know, concerns and, and questions about using, I believe this is the sp a spring borrow, um, amount. I would have the same questions. I believe that were asked about the North Stafford. Are there any portions of that project that, um, are critical to health and safety or that it can't be used that can be, um, can be looked at in, in case there's something there. Um, uh, if there are phasing of any of these projects, that's just a general question. And again, I really want to make sure I understand the funding source because cash is going to become <laughs> cash is king. Cash is king. So I do know. Um, my comment would be that I know that uh, it it looks just worn and damaged flooring, but there could be mold or mildew. But it's dangerous for these uh, students to be running across. This is the turf field. This is not the. Sorry, I skipped one. My yeah. apologies. Um, yeah. um, I can answer the question about the track um, safety and uh, what we may do if this one does not, um, if this does not go forward, is um, do some patching on the track. Um, there's also some areas that have come delaminated from the base. So you can actually pull up the surface um, from the base and those would need to be um, re-glued. So there are a few issues, but we could um, take care of those with a, a patching and uh, um, re-gluing effort. And um, yeah, that's it. Madam Chairman, this is Ms. Healy. Could we have a uh, estimate of the repair with the patching and the re-gluing to come back to us at the next meeting? I have that now. It's um, approximately thirty thousand, um, thirty thousand dollars. We do not have a proposal for that, but um, that's an estimate. Um, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, I have a question. Sorry, I just wanted to, if we did just the repair on the track at, um, Colo uh, uh, what is it, Colonial Ford, uh, Mountain View, at Mountain View, we just did the repairs, would that get them easily through the next year or two until we have a better idea what our fiscal situation is going to be at the end of this? Um, yes, that should, um, that should provide a safe surface um, for that amount of time. And I just wanted to, to just historical question that maybe other board members can weigh in. Am I correct that this project was was planned for a couple of years back and it was pushed off in order to uh, provide more funds for Ferry Farm? So it was kind of moved. Um, and so I just, just trying to remember if that's, is my memory correct on that? Yes. This, is, this is Chris Pulver, that's correct. Yep, that is correct. Um, all right, any other questions? About this John, item? what is John? What is your best estimation for how long that patch? Is it just a year or two, as Dr. Warner was asking, or is it longer, or is it shorter? What would be uh, an estimate that makes that a safe surface should we um, go that patch route? Um, I think that it would last a year or two, and um, and that's the, the question I had of the um, the folks that are uh, responsible for that work. Um, so I, I'm um, I feel sure it would get this through the next year, um, and then um, you know hopefully be able to come in um, the summer and do the project. 
and um, I don't think it would last a lot longer um, than that, but I can get you more information on that um, if you like. Um, I will, um, I will, this is, um, this is, um, it's young, it's young. I'm just going, I'm just back, going to, back to, um, uh, physical, physical, um, distancing, distancing. at this point, at this point in time, time. Should, should we, um, start, start school? school? I would, I would go, go with, with patching, patching it, up it up versus, versus um, the whole, whole construction. Um, right. um, John, 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 um, what Dr. Kisner was suggesting earlier, earlier was, in was in August, August first graduation. graduation. If we, if we opted, opted for either, either project, project would, it would it be completed, completed or, or would it, would it be uh, in, time in time for an, for an August, August first, first graduation, graduation if, 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 if. That, that ends, ends up, up coming. And um, you're speaking about the track project, um, and and I think it would, but um, uh, we're we're dealing with some unusual circumstances in the construction industry, so there there could be um, issues. I don't expect that with the track. We've asked that question of the contractor, and um, they felt sure they would have it done before the beginning of um, school in August. All right. Um, are there any additional questions or information requests? It sounds like there's um, information requested regarding the patching or regluing project for this particular project to come to us in two weeks. Is that is my understanding correct? correct. <laughs> this is Cecilia again. Can, can we, we also have information about whether the funds would be available uh, for that uh, the patchwork uh, if if we were to go that route, which I certainly would think it would be much more fiscally prudent at this uh, stage of our budget considerations. Okay, I, I don't hear anybody, any other comments on this one? If not, then we're gonna move on to um, the replacement of classroom flooring and other worn or damaged flooring at T. Benton Gale Middle School uh, are, are there any questions about this? This would be using budgeted FY20, meaning this year's um, budgeted operating funds. Um, and if I am in, in, if, I, if I did not say that correctly, Mr. Fulmer, please um, <laughs> correct me. But um, are there questions about this particular project? I, I got, um, Madam Chair, this is Dr. Chase. Um, I, I don't have questions. I just have the comment of that I've been in Gale Middle School and the flooring there is pretty awful. That's my other comment. And my other comment that I um, raised before is I've also been there and worn damaged flooring is to me a hazard uh, to students tripping accidentally. Um, so that is my comment there. It's something that I think that we need to get taken care of. Madam Chair, may I ask John, what is the scope of work for this project? When you're talking about the flooring, is it throughout the entire building or were there designated rooms or section of the building? And is the scope complete? Like, are we just taking care of the worst or are we taking care of it all? It's the worst and um, it's focused on the um, classrooms. Um, there, um, there is a phase that's planned for the future for the administrative offices, which are in much better shape. Um, this carpet is original to the building and it's, um, it is quite worn in the classroom. Um, so it's, it's focused on the, um, academic area and, um, it's a, a, there's a detailed plan for that. I'd be curious to hear the answer to Mrs. Hazard's question with Mr. Fulmer. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. I, heard, I, I did not catch that question. It kind of got um, soft there for a minute. Can you repeat that? Sure. I think I can um, say this is using budgeted FY20 operating funds. So, Chris, I guess my question to you, you are the one watching the bottom line as we get to the end of the year. Um, when you say operating funds, is this part of our construction? Uh, I know. I'm sorry. I always get the name wrong. 
fund that we would be using for these types of projects and do you feel comfortable knowing all that you know today knowing that that can change that um the hundred eighty nine thousand thirty dollars is um does that give you major heartache does that make sense what i'm asking <laughs> yes correct so um, this is out of our fy20 operating budget as it's indicated out of our O&M budget and this was planned all along and we did take this into consideration when we were looking at um, when i spoke with you guys um, and gals a few weeks ago um, about what our fy20 budget outlook was and, and projecting about two and a half million dollars in savings this was already taken into account that we were spending some of these o m um, funds on these but we're considering essential um, projects. So, so in summary, yes, I'm, I'm comfortable with spending this, these funds. Chairwoman Hazard, I have one yes. question for Mr. Anderson. M Mr. Anderson, um, in terms of the timeline and the fact that we're now into uh, a, a summer session, kind of spring summer session, um, how long would it take to get this done? And then, um, if you open up in August, would it be completed? Uh, yes, um, we've spoken with the contractor and asked that question. And the um, as long as we order the carpet by May 1st, then we would be able to complete it by the beginning of school. And that's um, um, assuming that there's no production issues with this particular carpet. Um, you know, um, Chairwoman um, Hazard, I would like to move this to action. I second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. I do have one more question before, um, if, if you don't mind. Um, so we will have a motion on the table, so we're we're in discussion. Um, hold on a second, let me get my, I'm sorry, let me get my notes in front of me. Um, I'm sorry, I had a complete mind blank. Give me just a moment, <laughs> I really apologize. Um, Oh, I know. Mr. Fulmer, it is expected, I believe, the Board of Supervisors expects the school board to pay for some of these projects in cash at the end of the year. Is that correct? I wouldn't say that they expect it at the end of the year. That um, gives the impression that we're, we're shifting funds out of, out of maybe salary lapse lines. I know they've been critical of that in the past. We've cleaned up that process to make sure there is board approval and that we're very transparent in what those funds are. This was actually already included in our O&M budget and plan to be done. And I think that is, um, is something that they have agreed with in the past. If these are, and I've talked with their staff as well about this, letting them know that we had several projects coming up on, on the agenda here at the end of the year, but we were prioritizing the essential items uh, just to, to make sure we were uh, approval with, with our funds at the end of the year. Understood. And I guess I, I should rephrase it as saying one thing that makes schools unique is we don't want to do a lot of construction when our students are in the building. So that gives us a fairly limited time frame, of course, barring today's events, that there are not children. There are usually children in the building until around the end of May and in the past even into June. So many times these projects that are planned, the um, delivery time, the advertising for bids is going to always occur in the spring so that it can be executed in the summer. Is that, would you say that's yeah. accurate? Yes, ma'am, that, that is um, a very good way of putting it. I've had that conversation with them as well. And I think they all are aware of that, that based on the school schedule that the summer is the optimal time to complete those to complete that work and, and so in the spring we're bidding it and awarding it so that we can ramp up for the summer okay there is a motion on the table are there any additional comments or um concerning uh this particular item it just go ahead uh, just one so we've approved we've set aside the money to do this project it's necessary because of the Warren and, and um, 
carpeting and flooring that's in the classrooms and the money is there um, and it comes out of fiscal 2020 and not next year's budget so to me you know another issue with this is for for teachers and students the environment that they're learning in is, is, is a profound impact on how there's their success and if it's old and deteriorated and decrepit it, it doesn't really enhance that learning environment i think that this is something we should definitely move to action and i think that as mr fulmer has stated the funds are there and he's comfortable spending them Madam Chairman, this is Ms. Healy. Uh, my turn. Yep. Um, I, I just want to, to state that I'm not going to be supporting moving this to action, not because I may not be, I will not be supporting it to be done, but my concern is that the justification that I saw in the agenda was that this is here because it was scheduled to receive replacement flooring this summer. And from my standpoint, anything that was scheduled prior to, you know, March of 2020 is subject to review. And, and I'm hearing things tonight from board members about the flooring being decrepit or dangerous or, um, you know, not in, in just in horrible condition that was not in the agenda item. So I would, um, and I can I can hold this for, for when we get to to a vote if this does get moved to action. But I I would like to have on the record that this condition, you know, it's is is it's necessary to be done for the health and safety of the students and, and the staff. That's the criteria we have applied in the past when we had to make tough decisions about what moves up and what does not. But I did not see that addressed in the agenda item. I just have my notes from the agenda item. I don't have it uh, in front of me. And if I miss something, you know, please, Dr. Kissinger, let me know if that was in there. But it appears that some of our board members, you know, have information that some of us, you know, did not have access to. And then um, I believe it could be in the record before we make any decisions on the spending fund, whether they're already planned or not, because I think we need to look at every expenditure that, that we are talking about with the things we have today. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to support you moving into action. I would prefer to come back with that information uh, about the, this, the health and, and safety coming from Dr. Kisner rather than, you know, from individual board members. Not that I don't you know, trust your veracity, but I'm, I'm not sure what qualifications we have, you know, ourselves as experts in any of these areas to make these uh, determinations. Yeah, um, Chair Chairwoman Hazard, I may not have qualifications of determining um, what is um, officially a health hazard, but as a mother and a person walking into that school and looking at the carpeting worn and damaged, I would not um, I would not want my child in there eight hours, but yet we allow other students to be in there and teachers and administrative and staff all day, all year. Um, so that is my assessment, but yes, definitely. Let's get some more. Let's get Dr. Kisner to get some information on the health um, of the of the, the area where this carpet is, is all over the place. So, yeah. Um, Miss uh, Chairwoman Hazard, is there a motion on the table to be called? Have to unmute. Um, so right now, the motion that is on the table, as I understand, is to move the item related to Gale Middle School, which was previously, sorry, ten point one six. Uh, to action. So um, let's uh, let's call the question on that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. And those opposed? No. Okay. So those that are no, can you raise your hand? Or, I think that will help. Um, that looks like Ms. Healy. Ms. Madam Chair, oh, would you like me to take a roll call? Would that be easier? Sure. Okay, yes. Dr. Chase. Aye. 
Ms. Hazard. Aye. Uh, Ms. Healy. No. Ms. Hollerbach. No. Ms. Randall. No. Uh, Dr. Warner. Yes. And Ms. Young. Aye. Madam Chair, motion passes four to three. Okay. Um, if you would, um, okay, is there a follow on motion? Uh, yes. Motion to approve uh, the award of a contract uh, in the amount of $189,030 for the replacement of classroom flooring and other warm damage flooring at T. Benton Gale Middle School. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Before this goes to um, to vote, uh, Mr. Anderson, is there anything you would like to add uh, regarding this item before board members are to vote in light of the comments shared by board members? Um, no, there is not. I think it's already been mentioned that the, um, the flooring is in um, poor condition. Madam Chair, I, I didn't get a chance to uh, to be heard on the, on the last motion. I just want it for the record that I'm not opposed to replacing the carpet. I, I agree with um, with uh, Mrs. Healy about indicating to our funding body that this is indeed a safety issue. Uh, so when we have to make our case that we're you know we're well versed in everything safety as relates to the expenditure of this money. So that's all I wanted to come for you know, to say, um, I'll be supporting this this time, but I just hope next time we have a story to tell when we're spending money where, where we don't know where, you know, where we're headed in the, in the very near future. Can I get a, a description of what is, um, uh, you know, I, I'm coming from an itch, issue at Perry Farm where, uh, you know, we had moldy carpet and we have dehumidifiers in the room and those classrooms are allowed to stay that way even after we're finished with a renovation. So I'm just curious as to how bad is the carpet at Gale that pushes it um, as something that needs to be done. Just, I don't know. So that's what I, I'm, I'm legitimately wanting to know. Yeah, and I can answer that question. I toured the school with the principal and our maintenance staff, and um, there's numerous classrooms that have the carpet um, unraveling, and they've used tape um, to tape it together so that it's not a safety issue um, for the, in those particular situations. Um, there's also a smell to this carpet because of the glue that was used. Um, it was um, it's inexpensive carpet and glue that was original to the building. And so, um, especially when the carpet shampooed, the, the smell is stronger. It's um, it's really always there. The glue is, is just uh, not a good product that was used um, 20 years ago. Mr. Anderson, this is Dr. Warner. How old is the, so how old is that carpet then? As old yeah, as the building? Um, 2002. Okay. That's right. It's original for the building and I understand it was installed in 2002. Okay. So it's almost we, 20 years old. Are we replacing carpet with carpet or is it going to be a different material? How will it be this time? This time it is um, mostly replacing carpet with carpet tile. And um, there are a few rooms that we're going back with VCT. Um, we walked the school and, and there are some that are going to be better with the hard surface uh, when this is done. God bless you, Mr. Anderson. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and may I make a, a comment? Is it my understanding that we're using carpet tiles um, in the hopes that if there's a problem, it's easier to replace just a portion rather than having to replace all the carpet? Yes, um, I think that product that we're using is going to hold up better and um, it's easier to replace when it's stained um, and, and keep the carpet longer. All right. Um, I, I just wanted to ask Dr. I mean, Mr. Anderson, my, my question, Dr. Uh, no, it's not Dr. Mr. Anderson, um, are, are you, do you believe that the condition of the carpet presents a health and safety issue in the school? That's, that's the um, question I've been asking all along. That, that, I just wanted to answer yes, that. Yes, I can, I can answer that. And um, I think that um, those questions are easy for me to answer because um, we would not allow the classrooms to be used if they were unsafe for the students. And um, so my inclination is that um, it's, it's definitely not good, um, but 
Um, I don't think that the, the students are in danger by being in those rooms. Um, now you do have situations where tape can um, come undone and then it's a tripping hazard. Um, it's definitely not ideal, but um, it's, it's not unsafe enough to close the classrooms. Um, and, and I would have to probably have a team of scientists to answer your question about the smell. Um, I don't believe that's a safety issue, but um, it's definitely annoying to smell that glue um, when you walk through these classrooms. So if it's annoying for you to smell glue, just imagine what it is for the little ones smelling that every single day. Yes, I agree with that. Thank you very much for clarifying those things for us. Okay. Are there any other comments? If not, um, all those in favor of this agenda item, please say aye. 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 And those opposed? No. no. All right, Dr. Chase? Aye. Uh, Ms. Hazard? Aye. Uh, Ms. Healy? No. Ms. Hollerback? Aye. Ms. Randall? Aye. Dr. Warner? Aye. And Ms. Young. Aye. Madam Chair, motion passes. All right, our final item for tonight is the approval of a utility right of way easement between Stafford County Public Schools and Verizon for the VOIP service um, to support the Sheriff's Next Generation 911 service. Are there any questions regarding this item? Madam Chair, I move that we move this to action item 9.06 or 9.07, I guess it is. Yes, 9.07. All right, is there a second? I'll, I'll second. Okay. <laughs> All right, it's been moved and seconded. Are there any... Um, comments or questions about this item? Um, Madam Chair, we'll yes. Dr. Chase. Um, so is it my understanding that this is a request from the Sheriff's Department and it's for, uh, it's a way for, for the, the school system to help with countywide safety? Yes, that's correct. Is this also I'm sorry, this is uh, Ms. Young. Is this also the same easement that's gonna be used for uh, voice over IP? Um, this is actually, um, it will have voice over IP um, installed as part of the 911 system upgrade. And so um, the answer is um, yes for that um, particular project for the um, Sheriff's Department. Okay. Um, can I just ask a general question about easements? Um, because I know I've got we've got some board members who know a lot more about that than I do. Um, so if we go into this and then in the future, uh, Verizon no longer or the sheriff's department is no longer using it for that purpose, would we get our easement back? I don't know the answer to that question. This is John Anderson. I think that um, that would that would be a um, long shot, um, not likely to happen because um, they're putting in this system to upgrade their 911 and um, it's not likely to go away anytime soon. But I'm, I'm sure it's possible um, to get the easement back if, um, if that system is ever um, abandoned in the future. Has this had legal review? Oh, sorry, Ms. Healy, go ahead. I, I just wanted to uh, respond to Dr. Chase. I read through that easement and there is a provision in there that we would have the opportunity to relocate it at our cost to another place. Although if you look at the um, the area where the easement is designated for, it's in the front of the, the uh, it's in the front of the building along Route 1. And I, I doubt that it would interfere with anything. It doesn't even come up to the sidewalk. But in order to terminate an easement that is not a temporary easement, which this one would not be a temporary easement, it would have to be uh, granted back to the, the school board. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. 
All right. Are there any more questions on this particular item? Yeah, I'm not sure if I did get the right answer to my question, and maybe we already did this in the past, but this is a question for Chris. So in order for this to work, we need to be on voice over IP at the school. And I'm wondering, will our voice over IP be completed in time prior to this? Am I, am I getting that right? I think this is two different projects. I'm not. I, 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 do, I do know they're two different projects and that's why I'm asking the question about if they're implementing this, should we already have it hours in place for it to work? Um, no, they're separate projects. So this is just for the sheriff's department and the 911 system, and that's what's uh, being upgraded to VoIP, um, along with other up upgrades for 911. And the uh, people from the sheriff's department explained um, the details about how this will make um, 911 safer in the county. So it's coming through our phone system or no? Is it not ours? No, it's going to the sheriff's department. So if you made a 911 call, then um, th there's going to be more capabilities and more um, advantages to that 911 system. If you have okay. an emergency and you need the sheriff's department, that's, uh, okay. that's the way this will work specifically for them. So we, we dial 911 from any phone in the schools? Yes. And so, we're, so we're paying for that? We're, we're, we're paying to to get that operational for the sheriff's department no this um this okay. is no cost it's just allowing the line gotcha. to go in along route one okay. and um and yeah it'll work better for the entire community including perfect. the school system perfect okay thank you thank you for that explanation sure. all right um there's been a motion to move this to action uh all those in favor please say aye Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? All right. I will say that that was carried unanimously. Their follow on motion. Uh, move to approve um, granting the easement to Verizon for um, approval of the utility right of way easement between Stafford County Public Schools and Verizon for the underground VoIP service in support of Stafford County Sheriff Department. Second. All right, there seem to be multiple seconds. Ms. Hall, I will let you sort that out. I got it. In favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries unanimously. Um, thank you board members for your, your time tonight. This was um, a new experience for everybody. I um, please be open to emails coming from Ms. Hall in the future about future meetings, which we may need to have about budget and other items. Um, Chairwoman um, Hazard, can I just make a comment real quick? Um, Since I didn't have the opportunity to earlier? Sure, let me just finish. Real quick. Yeah. Um, so um, I would like to, um, for me, I believe that uh, we may need some in-person meetings because of some of the budget deliberations we may have coming up. So please uh, respond when we bring those to, um, when we bring some of those ideas forward of when we need to meet. And I would actually like to ask the uh, Finance and Budget Committee to work with Mr. Fulmer on sort of reformulating a new budget calendar so that we can put those on our, looking, comparing the dates that are on there now with what um, dates we may need to move to as um, the budget process has changed. All right, Ms. Young? Uh, yes, real quick. Um, so I'm sorry I wasn't able to um, give my board comments. I just wanted to make sure that um, the FAB um, knows that we're going to have a meeting on Mar uh, April the 22nd, I believe. Um, so, yeah. And then I also wanted uh, to make a comment that I know for some parents, especially those that are the front lines of, of this pandemic, that they're going through a lot with this um, so I just want to continue to say that, you know, our educational system are doing all we can for the kiddos of Stafford County, but we also need to do it smart and keep our environment safe. I also wanted to thank Dr. Kisner and his staff, and I know everybody had thanked him already, but I didn't get the chance to do that. All the teachers, all the administrators, bus drivers, transportation especially. I know I helped out here and there with giving food here or handing out Chromebooks, and I did that but I would like to get a little bit more involved 
but I know that there are more parents that need some more help because there are students out there that if they're in the homes, but usually the school was uh, their way of coming out of whatever abuse or whatever problems they may have in the school system. So this was the question I was going to ask Dr. Kisner. Is there a hotline? And I know you mentioned there is a hotline for parents. So that was great that you mentioned that about the hotline. And then I already asked about um, the fact that we have um, some kind of uh, education uh, for this, uh, for training for the, the teachers. So that is great. Um, so um, thank you. Thank you very much for letting me speak. So I appreciate that. So our next regularly scheduled board meeting will be held on April 28th, beginning at 7. Stay tuned, though, for additional meetings. And again, thank you all for your service. And um, let's stay in touch. Thanks again and have a great evening. Stay safe. Good night, everyone. Good night.